the story so far. Agent 47 and his handler, Diana Burnwood, are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. When all of their recent missions turn out to be contracts for a shadow client, things take an unexpected turn. All their targets have been operatives in an invisible organization known as Providence. Providence has infiltrated the highest echelons of power and secretly owns our world. The Shadow Client wages a silent war against them. And so the Constant, Providence's enigmatic controller, seeks Diana out. His request, track down and eliminate the Shadow Client. In return, he offers something irresistible. The truth of 47's lost origins. Neither know that the man they hunt is 47's childhood friend. And unlike 47, he remembers everything. Reynard's house is just up the beach. Our intel indicates that she and her team are laying low, most likely planning the militia's next strike. Reynard is one of the Shadow Client's top lieutenants, and yet she's not a target. Not yet, anyway. She's no doubt high on our client's list, but for now, it's information we seek. Infiltrate the house and get us a lead on the Shadow Client. Up for some B&E, 47. On my way. Good aim. Now, according to the local home security provider, the house is equipped with multiple cameras placed around the perimeter. I suggest you get rid of them, 47. They could be out. Could be lying low. The satellite scans were inconclusive. Only one way to find out, I'm afraid. Bodies. Male and female. Early 30s. Executed. I see them. Oh, poor bastards. Looks like Reynard's grisly handiwork, all right. She was never shy about collateral damage. The orders. Don't think so. The house is registered to a non-existing environmental NGO. This feels more like identity theft. Like you, Reynard is known to use disguises. Hmm. Keep looking, 47. Nothing we can do for these people now. Looks like research reports. Berlin, Shanghai. Every major malicious strike since Thomas Cross's kidnapping. Looks like Reynard had a hand in all of them. All in the past, I'm afraid. Keep looking, 47.
found something. A file on Rupert Pierce, founder of Dynasty Global. The world's largest internet retailer. Hmm. If Pierce is a Providence operative, he's likely on the Shadow Client's hit list. But it's not what we came for. Keep looking, 47. Forty-seven. That computer. See if you can't access it. N encrypted. Hmm. Assuming there's a key, Reynard wouldn't just leave it lying around. Wait. According to the floor plan, the room you're in should be a lot bigger. There might be a concealed space behind the wall. Check for hidden panels, forty-seven. Ah. I thought so. This should be interesting. Hmm. Appears Reynard's cell is launching another strike. Those are sewer maps of a residential area in Wellington. Well, there's nothing we can do about it now. Our priority is the Shadow Client. Nicely done, 47. Should allow you to move more freely. Here we go. For the office computer, no doubt. I'm in. Hurry. I'm detecting movement up the road. A motorcade, possibly Reynard's. Uploading the data. Hold on. Receiving it now. Hmm. Nothing on the Shadow Client or the other cells. No names, no aliases. I doubt she even knows whom she's working for. Wait, here's something. A message from Robert Knox of Kronstadt Industries. And by the sound of it, he's a Providence operative. A defector. Well, well, well. Client won't like this one bit. And you can't wait to tell him. They're back. Multiple hostiles. I see them. Damn. Okay, we've got all we're going to get. Go to stage 247. Eliminate Reynard, and preferably without raising suspicion. One step ahead of the Shadow Client for once. Let's keep it that way. Ugh, I thought this night would never end. What a snob fest. And I even missed out on the action. Oh, I'm sorry you had to endure all that free champagne and cello music, Orson. What can I say? You really took one for the yeah, team. Yeah, well, I say stick to what you know. Jared, terrace all clear. Copy that. Do a sweep of the upstairs while you're at it. I knew you were gonna say that. So, uh, you gonna tell me who it was we just kidnapped? House guests of the PM. The wife and two daughters of one Lance Donovan, the VP of Dynasty Global. The online retailer? Uh-huh. Donovan is back in London, working. He should receive the pictures as we speak. Ah, blackmail. Donovan's boss, Dynasty CEO Rupert Pierce, is a top Providence operative. But we can't get near him, so I decided to, well, do a bit of outsourcing. Oh, could you fix me a cup of tea? Sure thing. You want sugar? Honey? Um, honey. No problemo. Mr. Donovan. Who I am is not important. You have seen the pictures, yes? Good. I will tell you exactly what to do. Do it swiftly and without question, and your wife and children go free, unharmed. Refuse or hesitate, and your family dies. Attempt to signal 
or warn anybody and your family dies. Do we have terms? Mm, not very convincing, Mr. Donovan. Take a deep breath and try again. Much better. Now, you will take the stairs up to the rooftop helipad where your boss, Rupert Pierce, is taking his morning jog. You will inform his guards that you are delivering an urgent message. You will approach Mr. Pierce, lure him close to the edge, and toss him off the building. Hey, you want green tea or mango? What do you think? You heard me, Mr. Donovan. The life of your boss for the life of your wife and daughters. Shouldn't be much of a choice, even for a workaholic. Do you understand me? Very good. Now, go. If I don't hear sirens from downtown London in five minutes, your family suffers the consequences. Best of luck, Mr. Donovan. We thank you for your sacrifice. Is it done? Good as. And Mr. Donovan's wife and children? The guys will let them go at the stroke of midnight, unless I say otherwise. Boss's orders. You know how squeamish he gets about collateral damage. Ugh. Unbelievable. I'm gonna turn in. You come in or what? Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Gerard, we're turning in. You can keep guard outside the door. Oh, and tell the guys to keep a lookout for Max once they dispose of the bodies, yeah? Damn. Damn thing must have run off again. <laughs> Let go of the neighborhood pets. Yeah, heads up, everyone. Max is on the prowl again. So if you find a trail of blood, it's just nature taking its course. Over. Maybe you don't expect to keep me around long enough to bother, is that it? I, um, didn't know it was that important to you, Orson. What can I say? My bad. I've been using the safe house for years. Right, you and Sean. Bet the house knew his name. Okay, I guess I could change it into... Welcome, Alma and Sean, too. <laughs> How's that? Mm, fa me. Or maybe second Sean. That has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Or Sean Light. <laughs> you know what, I'll think of some more while I go and brush my teeth. Fine. I'm gonna hit the shower. You do that, Orson. When are you shipping out again? Say Say what? I said, when are you shipping out again? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm supposed to rendezvous with the team in Riga, like five days from now. I've got no idea what the mission is or who my teammates are. Like, all this secrecy is starting to get on my nerves. You know the boss, belt and suspenders kind of guy. Well, I don't, and neither do you. That's kind of my, uh, that's kind of my point. They call me old fashioned, but like I say, uh, I like to know who I'm risking my life for. You know why? The rest are details. It's easy for you to say. At least you're in the loop. I take orders just like you. In fact, the boss deliberately keeps me out of the loop. I don't even know who the other cells are. Compartmentalization is key. Yeah, I guess. 
that Sean knew. Santoro, who left Monumental shortly after there. Jordan crossed Damn, his band's death, too tight. is working on a solo my old watch. and this just in. Stupid in downtown London, a man has allegedly plummeted to his death from the headquarters of Dynasty Global, the world's largest internet retailer. While the identity is unconfirmed, several eyewitness tweets claim that the deceased is none other than Rupert Pierce, Dynasty's founder and CEO. We will keep you updated as this story develops. I am Pam Kingsley, GNN News. Well, that's that. Smoke on the balcony? Yeah, sure. How about a scotch? No, I just brush my teeth. Oh, well, suit yourself. I'm having one before bed then. Good for the blood flow. to pick up a shipment in Brussels three days from now. A truckload of cutting-edge Kronstadt Industries military hardware. Drones and shit. You'll get a kick out of it, I promise. Well, shit, the Noxes really are defecting. High-level Providence stooges like them? That's a real feather in your cap. So why aren't you the one doing the honors? See, there's just a teensy possibility that it could be a trap. And if it is, well, I'm too important to risk. Wow. Don't start. No, no, I get it. Everyone's expendable, but some are more expendable than others. Is that it? I wouldn't put it on a t-shirt, but, well, yeah, in a nutshell. Fine, I'll do it. I know you can hold your own and all that, but I want you to be safe, Alma. I mean, I'd hate it if... Oh. Jeez, it's chilly out here. Sign of Max? No, man. But one of the lads found a bunch of dead sheep down the road. Max Nightcap? Hell yeah. Oh, well. As long as he's happy. Night, Alma. If you need your grass, the bag's in the medical cabinet. No need. I'm dog tired. The second I close my eyes, I'll be dead to the world. Night second, Sean. Shut up. Target down. Well done, 47. Now get off the property.
The Mercs have discovered your boat, 47. They're on high alert, combing the beach for intruders. Proceed with caution. Hmm. No way to get past them unnoticed. I suggest you cause a distraction, 47, and make it a loud one. The client has given us carte blanche. Hunt down the militia by any means necessary. A week ago, Providence was a threat. How did you swing the board? The board are practical people, 47. A blank check is hard to turn down. Besides, the Shadow Client's war on Providence is causing a global panic. Someone will need to stop the militia. Might as well be us. And the man on the train? told them about his offer. Taking a contract for personal gain is against ICA regulations. Sodas would have been proud. Is that a sense of humor, 47? Whatever next, crying at the movies? Why are you doing this? I know what it's like to have everything taken from you. He claims to know about your past, your childhood, your memories, everything Ortmeier stole from you. And you trust him? About as far as I can throw him. But this is our best lead in 20 years. I say it's time we break a few rules. Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is the annual Global Innovation Motor Race in Miami, Florida. After analyzing the data from Reynard's computer, the case is clear. The Providence defectors are Robert and Sierra Knox, head of robotics developer Kronstadt Industries. A visionary inventor and technological innovator, Robert Knox has spearheaded Kronstadt Industries to the bleeding edge of technological development. His equally brilliant daughter, Sierra, is not only a financial wizard, but also a fiercely competitive race car driver with a fiery temper to match. Kronstadt enjoys enormous popularity with global consumers. However, few are aware that the company is also one of the world's leading suppliers of next-gen military tech. Last year, despotic ruler Jin Po employed prototype Kronstadt drones against peaceful civilian protesters in the now infamous Tanyan Valley incident. And although it has yet to be proven, there is little doubt that the Noxes personally brokered the deal, making them complicit in a war crime. It is unclear why the Noxes would betray their masters, but likely the fear of being next on the Shadow Client's hit list has pressured them to cut a deal with the enemy. 
Undoubtedly, with Kronstadt Industries on their side, the militia will increase their attacks tenfold. And so our contract obligates us to retire Robert and Sierra Knox and contain the damage they may inflict on Providence. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race is on its last day, and it is down to the wire. Thousands of eager fans are gathered for the final laps of this unexpectedly close race. Sierra Knox is expertly piloting her red Kronstadt car. Her father, Robert Knox, roams the nearby Expo building where Kronstadt is showcasing its new prototype car. The Kronstadt RK Mark III has seen fierce competition from the Chinese Kowoon Heavy Industries' new racer. Moses Lee, CEO of Kowoon, has taken a dominant lead and looks invincible. Sierra Knox will need to risk it all if she wants to win for the third year in a row. The stakes are as high as they can get. Again, just to get this straight, you had no idea the device was in fact a bomb. None whatsoever. As I mentioned before, they asked me to deliver a package. I thought it was just pyrotechnics. As I understand it, Moses Lee is into that sort of thing. Interesting story. Want to know what I think? I think you were hired by someone to infiltrate the Cowan pit, plant that explosive somewhere, and detonate it. You know what we call that? We call that domestic terrorism. I'm just a delivery guy. I didn't even know what was in that thing. I may have taken a wrong turn somewhere, but that hardly makes me a terrorist. I think I need to call my lawyer. Some sort of vitamin hydration booster. 
normally reserved for the drivers. Fix me right up. What, like doping? No, it's for after the racing's done. Although it did kind of look like the Tour de France in there, what with all the syringes and IV stands. I think Sierra Knox had an appointment in there as well. Didn't meet her though. Shame. I hear she's fun to be around. Sierra Knox over at the hotel. Yeah, after the race. I've just got to pick up the documents from my van, but um, I had to knock out a guy and steal his flamingo outfit, and now I can't find my car keys. Yeah, I know it's dumb. I think I must have been disgusted. No, I'm just, I'm I'm just at a complete loss, man. I have no idea what to, what to do. You know, we could, but I don't. There's nothing I want to see. I, I don't really care about any. I've looked at everything. It's not. Got some goddamn super glue or something, huh?
You're the junior slipper and you got injured yesterday, right? Suppose I am. Great. This is your lucky day. Do well and there's a bonus day. Got it? Got it. All right, everyone. Look alive and get to your stations. Sierra may come in for a last-minute pit stop, and I need you ready and able. You, rookie, get into position. Grab your preferred tool and be prepared. Today's your day to shine. Let's do this. John, it's Grace. Look, I'm in a deep hole. One of my guys just jumped the ship, but Sierra's coming in. Everyone on your stations, now! <laughs> This is the mechanic. The special component has been installed in the car and is ready for activation. Excellent. Meet me shortly at the overpass. I'd like to handle this one personally. All right. Don't forget, this race is all about getting some miles under the hood. It's as much about the car's stamina and technology as it is about the driver's talent. Trevor Jones just wants to put California behind him and get on it. Stay in the race for as long as possible, and then who knows what might happen. Mr. Smith, a pleasure. Do you have the trigger? Right here, sir. Thank you. Tomorrow's papers will surely just write this off as a terrorist militia attack on some rich corporate CEO. But you and I will know better. Now watch this. Leave me. I need to be alone for a moment. Yes, sir. Get in line. 
bad things happen. I... I won't be a problem. I get the message. Both targets down. Well done, 47. Head for an exit, and we'll speak again soon. some sort of vitamin hydration boost normally reserved for the drivers. Panic is spreading, and now we are axing our own? Knox was a traitor. He would have caused incalculable damage. And he won't be the last. This is exactly what the enemy wants. We need to fight the sickness, not the symptom. And I have just the tool for the job. Right. The Burnwood woman. Eric Soders warned you about her, didn't he? The Crusader. I can handle Miss Burnwood. Everyone hates power until you offer them some. And <laughs> you ought to know. ICA speaks the enemy's language. We need them. And once we don't... <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Fact remains, we are shadowboxing. We need to know who we are up against. I was getting to that. His name is Lucas Gray, the late Mr. Cobb's head of security. Cobb was ground zero, first of our operatives to die. It had to be one of his staff, someone with military training and access to the plane. Ah, grasping at straws. Gray is a mercenary, a veteran of every backwater tragedy you've ever ignored on the five o'clock news. Chechnya, Sierra Leone, the list goes on, but before 89, nothing. No records of any kind. Now, oh, come on. CIA, KGB, plenty of spies went dark. After the curtain was lifted, I cast a very wide net. 
Lucas Gray simply does not exist. <clears throat> if you're all quite done wetting yourselves with excitement, I couldn't give two shits where he came from. I only want to know one thing. How does he know about us? I swear to God, this hearts and flowers crap will get us both killed. Can't you see? Your so-called friend is working for them now. He's not the man you knew. This is his fight too, Olivia. Even if he doesn't realize it. Like it or not, 47 is our last and only lead on the partners. He needs to remember. He's coming for us. And unlike you, he won't hesitate. Just get me inside. Rico, I need a favor. Morning 47. Our Providence contact has shared the identity of the Shadow Client, a former mercenary and bodyguard by the name of Lucas Gray. His past is a black void, but our analysts are digging deep. Meanwhile, we've had a breakthrough of our own. Comparing the malicious attack patterns with global shipping and transportation routes, we've figured out how Mr. Gray and his paramilitaries move around the world undetected. They're using the distribution network of the Delgado Cartel, Colombia's biggest drug manufacturer. Clearly, Gray must have struck a deal with the Delgados. Consequently, if we can cripple the cartel, we can severely limit the militia strike range. But to do so, we need to slay a three-headed serpent. Sociopathic cartel head Rico Delgado and his two closest lieutenants, PR guru Andrea Martinez and savant chemist Jorge Franco. With equal parts guts and guile, Rico Delgado runs a thriving billion-dollar criminal empire. The word is, the brutal and volatile cartel head is hell-bent on becoming the number one drug lord in the world. To achieve this, Martinez, a childhood friend of Delgado's, has been buttering up state leaders and decision-makers, paving the way for an expansion of the Delgado logistics network while the brilliant but aloof and antisocial Franco has been hard at work developing a new type of super cocaine. So, three of Colombia's most infamous crime lords inhabiting a decidedly hostile environment. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Colombia, 47. The remote village of Santa Fortuna awaits you deep inside the Colombian rainforest. An iron-fisted Delgado cartel rules over the village and its surroundings. Security around Santa Fortuna and the closed-off cartel compound is extremely tight. Armed Sicarios patrol the streets of the village, ready to enforce harsh punishments to those who do not comply. Rumors persist of hidden transportation cave systems connecting the village, the cartel compound, and the hidden coca fields beyond. It is a rare occurrence to have all three cartel leaders present in the village at the same time. Expect that all targets are protected by scrupulous killers armed with automatic weapons. Rico Delgado inhabits his fortified mansion on the outskirts of the village, while Andrea Martinez can be found in her village office or around Santa Fortuna itself and Jorge Franco is engaged in development of a new drug in his field laboratory. Happy hunting, 47. Cartel business only.
Not just any plant, apparently. Rare plant. It has more herbs. Must be very important to them to raise his life, I guess. I guess so. He's not one to give up. Make sure you don't mess with Franco's new experiment. He's trying to distill the essence of some rare flower from the jungle. And he's very fragile. Ah, so that's what he was yelling about earlier. Yes. The experiment has gone wrong a couple of times, and he has to go out into the jungle to replace the plant each time. I get the sense he's running low on samples. So if you value your job here, don't mess around with it. You can count on him. So, uh, Franco's plant is dead? I no, no, no. Now what? Yes, I need to call Franco. He'll probably want to have a look. I can only go one way. Part of floral sample. It appears the machinery is faulty, sir. The sample has been <clears throat> destroyed. Yes, sir. See you soon. Franco is going to be so upset. See you, say. Think he'll kill us? I mean, you know, for real? We didn't do anything. He's not going to believe. <sighs> so 
son of him. We set the power and the timer correctly. Someone must have tampered with it. Bastards! I have to go and find another plant now. How is an artist supposed to work with tools like this? Our advancements will change the world of recreational drug use forever. Art takes time. But we're left dealing with ineptitude and faulty equipment. This cannot go on. Let's see. Ah, yes, there we are. Follow us. what I was. Come out. Confirmed down. Nice work, 47.
you go to me. Hey, can you start doing something in your life and go check that out, will you? Si, sí, por qué no? Yeah, that was one weird noise, but I don't see anything. Okay. where one Rico was brought in, the financier. What the hell kind of name is that any? It's like, he does the name of something. Did you hear Javier stole the love letter Hector Delgado wrote for Martinez? Have to jump out of a window before Hector discovered him. I think he hurt his leg in the process. Yeah, I heard. He even passed the letter around the basement bar at the party last night. Weird to think Hector and Martinez used to be an item. I mean, he's batshit crazy and she's so hyper luxurious. She can't even stand to be in her village mansion for too long. Talk about an odd couple. Yeah, I'd love to see her face if she ever found a letter, though. Rumor has it, she hates him. That's my impression as well. Sad for Hector. He's still crazy about it. You need to be extra careful around your family items. Mr. Delgado got some important pictures and things like that in his trophy room that you need to be very careful. Fortune settling down as a romantic book writer. Beats the hell out of that garden lady and her paperbacks. Not sure what Martinez would say if she saw it. I understand you have a certain letter in your possession. Yeah? Maybe. So what? Today, sir. Oh. Oh. 
Ok. Entonces, Javier is seeing his boss's daughter. He told me not to tell anybody. So you know? Uh, yeah. so I have a letter sir, from Miss Martinez. This is a restricted area. Maybe... Is that from Hector? That looks like his handwriting. I'm on a strict orders to keep anything from Hector away from her. I'm... just a messenger. Well, I'm not opening that can of worms. If you think it's important for Martinez to get it, you figure out how to plant it in her desk. No one here will touch that with the ten-foot pole. Fine. Hey, how are you? Miss Martinez, I have this for you. A letter? Is that Hector's handwriting? I don't know, miss. I'd recognize that junked-up scrawl anywhere. I don't want anything from that bum. Anything I should know about Paula? Well, Miss Martinez, 
There's no easy way to say this, but it's actor, Miss. He's been calling all morning. I had to tell him to stop, but he kept on going. Maybe you should talk to him. Not a chance. Just hang up on him if he calls again. Very clear. I don't know how that happened. Well, make sure it doesn't happen again. Burn everything that even remotely smells like that idiot. Got it? Yes, Mrs. Martinez. Ah, to hell with it. Let's see what that fool has to tell me. to say. My, Hector, you romantic fool. I had no idea you still felt this way. Maybe... Hmm. But has he really changed? One thing to say all these things, these wonderful things, another is to have actually changed. We did have some good times, Hector, it's true. But you're just too dangerous. A loose cannon. I can't trust you to do right by me. And yet I do feel some of those old emotions as well. No. No, I can't do this. This has to end. Better to let this letter and your words end up as food for the piranhas than let my heart end up there. Martinez is down. Good work. guys in lock up in Mala, and yet all of them worked two hours after Brim broke in. Uh, that's only half the story. Martinez and
meat is so stupid. Sure, the guy's a drug lord and everything, but seriously, what if it doesn't respond? What if it speaks Spanish? Maybe it only understands Spanish. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. I'm a professional hippo whisperer. I can do this. Okay, I just gotta find a way to get it out of that tunnel. I don't want to end up as hippo fodder. These fruits just aren't cutting it. signal down here. Damn it. Uh, maybe I need to go somewhere else. That is so wonderful. Okay, now, now, wait right here. I'll go find your master. Don't move. Little mijo, <laughs> come to Papa. It's me, huh? It's your Papa coming to you, little one. Come on. Oh, how are you, buddy? I am impressed with your work. Yeah, I honestly thought that I would have to feed you to the hippo, but you, you pulled it off. 
Look, I'll wire you your payment as per our agreement. Now, if you'll excuse me. And leave us alone for a little while. I want to spend some time with Mijo by myself. Ah, Mijo. You are a beautiful beast, aren't you? Eh, but you know, I think we need to cut that thing for a while, huh? Huh? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. See, si, Papi, see. Si. All targets neutralized. This should paralyze the cartel. Excellent work, 47. Now head for an exit. Assignment successful. Tactical targets neutralized. Militia transport network disabled. Location of primary target unknown. Team chasing several leads. End message. Encrypt and send. source checks out. We can prove the board knew about the chemical leaks. We'll have grounds for a retrial. It won't make a difference. 
They're too powerful. They're not the devil, Nancy. Just the company. They're not above the law, don't you see? This is bigger than James. Those bastards killed 80 people. And they got away with it. Think about what that means. No one's untouchable. No one's untouchable. Diana! Coming! Got what we came for. Move out. The militia has released a hostage tape, outing the existence of Providence to the world. This was a fatal mistake, and our analysts are tracing its origin as we speak. In the meantime, we have a lead on Lucas Gray's top lieutenant. Turns out the Delgado cartel's counterfeiting unit was creating fake IDs for the militia, and one operative in particular stands out, Wazir Kale, an infamous South China sea pirate better known by his nom de guerre, the Maelstrom. The Maelstrom and his cutthroat band of outlaws were the scourge of the shipping industry in the post-recession years. But his reign of terror came to an end with the disastrous 2014 hijacking of the supertanker, Francis King. Chinese elite forces stormed the ship, resulting in the deaths of a dozen sailors and most of the Maelstrom's crew. But Carle slipped away unseen. The Maelstrom's connection to Grey is unknown. But we believe it was he who carried out the audacious killing of a Providence CEO in Shanghai, along with two reactivated members of his old pirate gang, Vanya Shaw, a shady figure in Mumbai's criminal underworld, and Darwood Rangan, the gang's old cashier turned dodgy movie producer. Shaw, Rangan, and the Maelstrom form Lucas Gray's Eastern Cell. They are a crack strike team, and stopping them is our client's most pressing concern. Unfortunately, the elusive maelstrom appears to have vanished into the seedy underbelly of Mumbai, the cradle of his criminal legend, and no one knows his whereabouts or what he currently looks like. So, a bandit queen, a showbiz charlatan, and one certifiable ghost. I shall leave you to prepare. Welcome to Mumbai, 47. One of the most densely populated cities in the world, home to more than 12 million people. If you wanted to disappear and hide from the world, this vast city is perfect. The maze-like sprawling slums offer secret paths and surprises around every corner. The elusive Maelstrom knows the city like the back of his own hand. Locating him will be a considerable challenge. A place to start could be the slums where his former gang, the Crows, has recently risen from the ashes. Darwood Rangan will be easy to find in his half-finished tower, wrapping up his new film called Mumbai Hero. While Vanya Shah has ensconced herself in the overgrown remains of an old train yard. Your three targets call this labyrinthine part of the city home, so choose your approach carefully. Country can stay. Now go 
up and admit you're wrong. My God, can you hear yourself? You're an idiot, yeah. products he's selling. Very doubtful. I've been hearing a lot of strange noises coming from his apartment. He's pacing around at night and I'm pretty sure he's doing other things in the building. At least he's only here for a few days. Maybe he's an addict. Like that guy last year. Remember him? The state of his room after they kicked him out was just terrible. I don't know what he is, but I'm sure he's up to no good. You know, at one point, I'm pretty sure I saw him handling what looked like some sort of weapon in there. I told the landlord, but he doesn't care as long as the bills are paid. I can't wait for him to leave. I think it's really cozy and colorful, and it's so authentic. Yeah, well, let's move on now to the open-air laundry. 47, this is one of the Mumbai chores. My records show a few residential complaints about a new tenant in the building. Something related to strange behavior. It might be worth looking into. Who knows what kind of maniac he is? I'd rather just sleep in my living room until he moves out. Look at the way he's dressed. Striped purple suit and a black cap. A bit, I. He's just trying to intimidate you. Be a man. Ah, I'll be a man later. Go down. I tried to go up there to spy on these things, but he was already there. That scope adjusted with this horror of viewfinder. What I would give for a world class sniper rifle right now. Well, well. It appears we have a rival assassin in Mumbai, and he's training his sights on Darwood Rangan. By the looks of it, I'd say we're dealing with a local operator known as the Kashmirian. Damn broken viewfinder. If I can't adjust the scope right, I'll never make the shot. Good thinking, 47. Now, if we could only make Rangan appear in that window somehow. Karen Dar, aka the Kashmirian, was born in the US, but fled to his mother's native land, India, 20 years ago, following an FBI investigation into a string of serial killings in Texas. He adopted a new identity here and now works as a gun for hire for local mobsters. But who would want Rangan dead?
done mixing those colors. I mean, how long can it take to smudge out a few blues and reds? I'm creating art here. 70% of the work is finding the right colors. Color mixing is an entire art form on its own. It takes time. Yeah, well, get a move on. Mr. Rongan wants you to go and get him as soon as you're done mixing your fancy colors there. You got it? Fine. If only I could compromise a little with my artistic integrity. This would run a lot smoother. Des and wait for Mr. Rangan. I'm sure he'll be there shortly. It's me. Just to let you know that the house artist is ready to continue painting. Ah, Mr. Hossein, ready at last. Uh, did you get a shave? Oh, well, never mind. Come with me to the lounge. After you, Mr. Rangan. Magnificent use of colors and form. Kya baat hai? If the new piece catches my forceful nature like this, I will have nothing short of a masterpiece on my hands. I'll be the envy of everyone. I guarantee a perfect execution, Mr. Rangan. Hi, mister. All right. Chalo, let's get this done with. I expect these to be the final brush strokes, Mr. Hussain. I'm a busy man. You know, this painting is sure to bring you a lot of future work. Hmm. Look, once the word gets out and my art appreciating friends see it, your phone will be ringing off the hook. I can't wait. Hold your breath for a moment, Mr. Rangan. That's the reason I told you I wouldn't pay for the commission, by the way. I'm not stingy. No, no, not at all. But if I'm already paying you in exposure, hmm? Well, let's not overdo it, huh? you know? I prefer cash over exposure. Clench your fist, please. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> but sometimes, exposure can be worth more than just money. Because in this case, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Just wait and see. When you're done with this job, the contracts will be rolling in. That sounds wonderful, Mr. Rangan. Can you look up a bit? Hey! That shot came from the Chawls. It looks like the Kashmirian finally got a clear line of fire. Darwood Rangan is dead, and not even by your hand, 47. What will you think of next? Hold up, 47. The Kashmirian is on the move. He's heading for another flat inside the Chawls. This might be worth investigating. If nothing else, we may get a lead on who his client is.
47. It appears the Kashmirian is using this room as a base of operations. Let's see what he's up to in here. Forty-seven. This is interesting. It looks like Vanya Shaw hired the Kashmirian to kill Darwood Rangan. Well, since he's already eliminated, perhaps you should call Shaw and let her know the contract is fulfilled. How did you get this number? The contract on Rangan has been fulfilled. Very good. I will make sure you are widely agreed upon some. I'd prefer cash. Maybe we should meet. No. I have more important things to do. There is now a large power gap in Mumbai, and I need to make arrangements to fill it as soon as possible. The money will be transferred to your Bitcoin account as agreed upon. Thank you for your work. Well, it looks like your call triggered something inside the Shah compound. She's making another call. One moment, I'll try to patch in. 47, she's talking to the Maelstrom. I'd recognize that voice anywhere. They're meeting up at the small bridge in front of the train yard. Now's your chance. Seven? Vanya Shah's meeting with someone. It's... it's the Maelstrom. Now's your chance.
Tanya Shah and Razio Kale, a.k.a. The Maelstrom. Confirmed kill. Mission completed. Time to find an exit. According to records, this was a youth correctional facility until 1962, when the estate was overtaken by an obscure Soviet research fund, the Institute for Human Betterment. It looks deserted. The place was abandoned after a fire in 89. Then, only a few weeks ago, it was acquired by an anonymous investor using cryptocurrency. It has to be Lucas Gray. He's here. Be careful, 47. The breadcrumbs were almost too easy to follow. It could be a trap. Not a trap. An invitation. I knew you would. You've come a long way, 47. And even now, you don't remember. This place? This was our prison, where Father trained us, shaped us into killers for Providence. Now, you don't remember. They ripped it out of you, wiped it away, but I do. I remember everything. You're a terrorist with nothing to lose. You'd say anything. I know it's difficult. You never miss your mark or question your function, but we made a pact, you and I. Do this. And we both lose. There was an incident. That boy, he died. He lived. Because of you. Don't you remember his name? You know this. Deep down, you know. What was his name? Subject 6. Your name is Subject 6. And what is our purpose? To take them all down. We were going to tear it all down. The Institute. Providence. Everyone who'd ever hurt us. We failed. The partners grew paranoid, made sure that Ortmeier's children would never challenge them again. I'm the only one who got away unchanged. The only one left who remembers. Ortmeier was Providence. Everything he did to us, everything he made us do, it all leads back to them. I'm breaking more rules than I care to count, Mr. Gray. What's your play? The partners hide behind a cloak of anonymity. Only one man knows their true identities. Your client, the top controller, the one they call the Constant. He is the key. <laughs> but he is untraceable. So what am I missing? A man would come to the Institute. A man with a Providence pin. The first Constant. If we find him, if he's still alive, he's our way in. You don't know who he is, but 47 does. That's what this reunion is all about. Show them. You're just gonna hand it over. Our one bargaining chip. Olivia. Fine. 47's memory was erased, irreversibly at the time. But after Ortmeier's death, his estate was acquired by the Ether Corporation. And they made an antidote.
It's a long shot, I know. This is not how it works. We don't just join the revolution. ICA is neutral. We don't take sides. I hate to break it to you, lady, but neutrality is a side. It's the side of the status quo. People have died. Civilians. You align yourself with terrorists, murderers. Sometimes even monsters serve a purpose. Look. Enough. You have a choice. But I made mine a long time ago. I will finish what I started. Subject 47, most gifted of all my boys. So you're the pick of the litter. Tell me about the incident. The subject ran away, he and another boy. The instigator was punished accordingly. As were all the neighbors. My men did what needed to be done. It won't happen again. Bring your house in order, Doctor. You won't like the alternative. Gentlemen, let's go over the plan. The first constant is none other than Janus, the legendary Cold War spy master, a KGB senior officer and head of the sixth column special branch at Lubienka. Janus is a certified genius and expert of counterintelligence. He retired from the KGB in 1988 when he fell out of favor with the Kremlin and defected to the US. Shortly after, the Soviet Union collapsed. Now, it is unclear when Janus stepped down as the constant, but since 2004, he has been a resident of a quiet community in suburban Vermont. Mr. Gray. Right, so here's the catch. As an elite KGB agent, Janus was trained to withstand interrogation and torture. No amount of pressure will force him to disclose information he doesn't want to. Instead, we will need to search his home for clues. But if Providence learns of our presence, the game is up. So we frame Janus, make Providence think he was the real Shadow client. Correct. I will file a false ICA report, claiming to have traced a number of calls from Janus' house to the Institute in Romania. The case will seem clear. Mr. Gray was only a figurehead. Janus was pulling the strings all along. And by eliminating him, we will have neutralized the militia once and for all. However, for this subterfuge to work, you'll also need to deal with Janus's security detail. A Providence Herald and former Secret Service agent by the name of Nolan Cassidy. Intel describes him as diligent and inquisitive. And we cannot risk that he contradicts our story to his employer. Seems workable. I certainly hope so. Everything depends on this next move, 47. You made this our fight. Now let's even the playing field. Whittleton Creek, Vermont. On the surface, a picture-perfect suburban dream. Wide roads, golden maple trees, and verdant lawns. Most residents here are white-collar professionals, ranging from university staff to government employees. Most, but not all. Janus's unpresuming home is protected by a host of bodyguards, and intel shows that the fragile former constant rarely leaves the property. Nolan Cassidy, on the other hand, roams the neighborhood streets. A recent arrival, the dutiful Providence Herald is busy making threat assessments and settling in with his security team. Now remember, this is about more than just revenge. 
Janus is the key to bring down Providence. So get in there and find us a lead. Good luck, 47. Your chance to change the world. Vote Blake. Oh, hello there. I'm Charles Blake, chairman of the Homeowners Association. Have a flight. I'm running Charles for a seat Blake in the next election. I support. don't believe we've met, Mr. I'm not from around here. Ah, I see. Not a registered voter, then. I don't much care for politics. <laughs> I like your for you. Mr. Blake has many important me. initiatives to share. I don't care about politics either. <laughs> yeah, have a nice day. Have a flyer. Read more about... Excuse me, sir. Are you a registered voter? I'd love to tell you about a new candidate who might just change your life. Yes, sir. A total game changer here. I'm listening. Wonderful. Oh, uh, well, I'm sure you're aware that voting season is upon us again. Um, and if you're anything like me, a recent immigrant to this fine country, the candidates this time around just aren't very, um, savory. But we have a man here today who is about to change all that. I don't care much for politics. That is exactly why Blake is out ringing doorbells today. He has no stakes in Washington. No connections to the establishment. No... Allies hidden away in lawless groups that pull the strings around the world. He's just a common man who decided that he wouldn't take it anymore. He's here to clean up, to give you exactly what you want and to make sure the government doesn't stick its nose into everything. Fascinating. How is he going to achieve all that? By imposing restrictions and pushing crippling laws that will bind legislators to their desks for decades. His approach is simple. Give every one of those Washington-based desk jockeys so much work they simply won't have time to enforce the existing laws. And then, while they're busy looking through their fat law books, use his executive powers to undo the existing laws. It's a radical approach, sure, but quite effective. And this Blake character, he's out here now, ringing doorbells. Sure is. Why do you ask? No reason. Good on you. Be sure to vote come election day, and feel free to spread the word about Charles Blake III. Here's your chance to change the world. Vote Blake. haven't been poking around the frog habitat behind the house, have you? No. Oh, okay, great. It's it's just that, uh, well, I I saw one of those security people from Mr. Janice's house, and I'm pretty sure he was burying something back there, and uh, I just figured since you guys seem to be, you know, working together, you, you might know about it. Can't say that I do. Someone from Janice's security detail buried something in the frog habitat behind Cassidy's house. What I could that possibly be? If we uncovered Jimmy Hoffa's remains back there someday. Uh, okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll just leave you to it. Uh huh. I wonder what's on TV tonight.
A cigar box with a few cigars and a note inside. Well, this is very interesting. The note indicates that the box was given to Janus by the Constant as per tradition, he writes. 47. This could mean the Constant and Janus meet up on a regular basis. Excellent find. In that case, Charles Blake III would really appreciate it if you voted for him in the upcoming election. Would you like a fly? Or perhaps, if you have time, I could tell you more about him. He's a fascinating man with many bold ideas. Blake? The chairman of the Homeowners Association? If he's running for office, God help us all. That man effectively tried to cancel Christmas once because he felt it wasn't possible to achieve matching Christmas decorations across all the houses in Whittleton Creek. I... well, some of those decorations could be considered a little over the top. I mean, back home, we never went all in, as you say here. It's Christmas! Blake thinks that just because he owns a lot of the land around here, he can boss everyone around. We have to go to town meetings every three weeks to do votes on local regulations because he keeps coming up with new ways of trying to control what we can or can't do around here. If that man ever got into higher office, we'd all be living in a police state. So, no flyer then? <gasps> Here's a flyer for you. Mr. Blake has many important initiatives to share. Have a fly. Read more about Charles Blake III and his politically flexible platform. Darling, I'm so hungry. Have you seen those beautiful patties back there? And Mr. Wilson just keeps standing behind the grill, even though there's clearly no more gas on it. I know, it's weird. Why doesn't he go grab a new canister? I'm telling you, these new folks are strange. Did you see that Cassidy guy snooping around here? He's been looking at the party three times already. Why not just go inside? It's open to everyone. Yeah, it's strange, all right. Oh, maybe he's a vegan? Well, I don't trust a man who can't eat a rare steak. Christ, all you ever care about is food, Al. You should take this more serious. They're our neighbors. If they have secrets, we have a right to know them. The Wilsons? Sounds like a made-up name if you ask me. Terminator guy who's working on Daddy's house? Same guy who just did Cassidy, right? Yeah. So, I let him use the green shipping container to store some chemicals. I asked him if it was poisonous, but he assured me that it was only a sleeping agent. Get this, he told me that he doesn't kill the bugs, he only sedates them, so that he can set them free later. Let me get this straight. He's an exterminator who cares about the lives of insects. What a weirdo. I thought so too, but then, he told me this story about his pet cockroach, Pedro. It was genuinely a touching story. His parents were poor and couldn't afford to buy him a dog, but he found this cockroach in his room one day and he took care of it. Pedro lived in a shoebox and he even made a little leash for him so he could take him walking. They did everything together until one day 
He heard his mother scream from the kitchen where he had left his pet while he went to the bathroom. He rushed to the kitchen where he found Pedro pierced under one of his mom's stilettos. Oh, great. Now I feel bad for all the roaches I've stepped on. I know. This fatty guy is driving me crazy. Every time he sees me, he comes out and wants to talk. And the problem is he just won't shut up. Always ranting about that damn lawsuit against Janus and waving piles of paper at me. As if I give a rat's ass about their problems. Let the judge sort it out. What do I want? A lawsuit want between Janus and a local ask resident. Him to it get might be up. just what we're looking for. Batty lives in number 432. Just pick one. All right, Doc, sorry. I'm just stressing out here. Okay. Please, do what I you can, all right? Supposed to be a yeah, I'll talk Saturday, later. But there are just so many letters. I got a package for Batty as well. Did you know he was engaged in a lawsuit against Janus? That old Russian guy I talked about? No, there's only me here to cover it. I would love it if someone else could help. Even if it was only with that package to Batty. He talks and talks, and I just don't have time for that today. All right, I'll call you when I'm over by the bus. Bye, honey. Do you need some help? You know what, friend? I could indeed use some help. It's very kind of you to ask. People in this neighborhood are just so friendly. That's what I really love about this place. No problem. What do you need? Well, I'm running awfully late today. Chatty people in this neighborhood, you know? Anyway, I've got this package for James Batty in number 432. Would you be able to deliver it to him? I wouldn't normally just hand over a package like that, but you look very trustworthy. I could do that. House number 432? Yes, big house at the bend in the road. It's undergoing fumigation at the moment, so you can't miss it. Just leave it in the mailbox and ring his doorbell, and he'll come get it. He lives in his shed in the backyard, so it might take a few moments for him to show up. Consider it done. Thank you again. This place is just amazing. Helen gives away muffins, and you're helping deliver packages. What a day! Janus is apparently engaged in a civil lawsuit with another resident of Whittleton Creek. James Batty, the plaintiff, wants Janus to stop his annual landing of a helicopter near the local creek. Batty claims it interrupts the nesting birds and a species of frog that has been declared endangered. Must be a very important trip given his poor health.
Good work on the undercover agent. You just managed to blend in very nicely. Thank you, sir. They've gone entirely native. You'd be hard pressed to distinguish them from the other residents who are living in Russia. It's genius. If we can get rid of a local plumber, we can put in a new guy and have him install cameras in people's homes. I suppose so, Mr. Cassidy. Yeah? You'll see. We'll own this town yet. Janus's house yet? No. I got sidetracked by all the activity surrounding that politician who came to visit. Hmm. Well, I've got another letter that needs to be looked at before we allow it through. Cassidy made it clear that we'll have no leaks coming from here. I'll put it in the pile when I have time. Got it. So Cassidy withholds Janus's outgoing mail. He might have written something considered confidential in the past. Might be worth a shot. Hmm. A letter from Janus to someone called Zoe. It looks like a draft, and is full of explicit descriptions of how unhappy Janus is with Zoe and his sister having been appointed chairwomen of the Ark Society. Huh. I've heard that name before. This is a good find, 47. Hmm. A recording of some sort. The note mentions another house. Perhaps Cassidy is using one of the vacant buildings as a base of operations, 47. Good work, 47. We now know Janus is meeting with the Constant at an event related to the Ark Society. And we have an approximate date as well. I think that's all we're going to get. We're close to the finish line. It's time to end this. Station four, nothing to report. Wait, that's not an ordinary resident of Whittleton Creek 47. This must be one of Cassidy's men working undercover. I suggest you keep an eye out for more of them. Join us, giving away all these wonderful muffins. Oh, I'd love to, my darling, but I've got to do some sewing. Janus has a dressing gown that needs a few touch-ups, and he's getting anxious. Apparently, he needs it for something soon. You seem to have so a many robe for Janus. What could he need I that for? How you find the time? Well, when you're retired, you can get an astonishing amount of things done. Just oh, fine, Mrs. West. They're moving fast. They're going out there. At the One moment. guy out there in particular seems to really like them. You're not a local fellow. Oh, that's nice. Are there enough cakes, or do I need to make more? I can always make more. Well, honestly, he's wolfing them down at an impressive pace. But he's got to take a break at some point. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to make some more. All right, my darling. Thank you. Oh, 
it's a gardener. What are you planting today, my man? Hmm. Sinister-looking basement. What could she be doing down here? Ceremonial robe of some sort with a note from Janus attached. Hmm. The note is interesting. Janus has asked Helen to do a few repairs on the robe before he leaves for his annual trip. He even put a date there. This is valuable information, 47. Tell you, mm. these are the best muffins I ever had. I'm supposed to meet a client for a house showing today, but <laughs> I can't stop eating. Maybe you know him, Mr. Nolan Cassidy. Um, can say that I do. Well, he's uh, he's interested in the Schmidt house down the road. You know, the one that police shut down after the well incident. I'm not really from around here, so I don't know anything about that. Ah, I see. Well, never mind. He can wait a little longer. I need to squeeze a couple more of these beauties down. Thanks for visiting Granny's today. We specialize in homemade baked goods, local and artisanal. We're offering visitors free <laughs> Is there someone else supposed to be doing this? That's it. Looking sharp, sir.
Drop off the surveillance tapes on Janus at the house. Cassidy was out. Yeah, added them to the pile. What a stupid system. Record the surveillance in the attic. Bring the tapes over to HQ and review them there. The recorder is perfectly capable of playing the tapes as well. Why not just keep them here? What? Risk the owners mm. of this house something coming home. Cassidy is certainly keeping a close watch on Janus. I'm willing to bet those surveillance tapes hold interesting information. Excellent 47. This recording confirms that Janus is planning to meet with the Constant. This is just the sort of thing we're looking for. Thank you, sir. This, uh, this will be over in no time. All right. Good job, sir. Thank you. What? Aren't you the realtor? I've been waiting hours for you. Mr. Cassidy, I'm sorry for the delay. I'm ready to take you to the house. About time. Let's go. You know which one it is, right? Last one on the right, far end of the road. 
I hope you've got your presentation in order. I don't want this to be a waste of time, you understand me? Of course, Mr. Cassidy. I've been eyeing this place for some time. I trust we can make a quick execution here. Yes, Mr. Cassidy. What are you waiting for? Unlock the door and start the tour. Ah, finally. I've had my eye on this place for quite some time. Let's see what sort of secrets she holds. This is the downstairs living room. It is most commonly used for watching television and other recreational purposes. Large room with two Easy to get to exits. Dark floors hide stains easily. A room with lots of potential. I don't know. Got anything more interesting to show me? It's all very familiar. The kitchen. Gas stove. Vinyl floors, which can be quite slippery when wet. Along with the bathroom, the kitchen is the most dangerous room in the home. What about storage possibilities? Anything of that nature you could show me? Your standard garage, spacious enough for someone to set up a gym or training area, with some added soundproofing, an enterprising individual could use this for many things. Yeah, that's not gonna make me buy this place. Let's move on. This is the downstairs bathroom. Useful when cleaning off after a messy day of work. I don't know. I'm not really feeling it in here. What else can you show me? This is the garden area. Manageable size, well-placed shrubbery, useful for hiding yourself or other things. Tree house, which affords an excellent overview of the adjoining gardens. And look at all those lawn lamps. Good thing it hasn't been raining. Eh, interesting, I suppose, but not really something that seals the deal for me. Yet another room up here. I suppose you could use it as an office or recreational room of some sort. Maybe a place to store your memorabilia. 
I don't know. Got anything more interesting to show me? It's all very familiar. Here we have the master bathroom. Shower, toilet, double sinks. Perfect for the busy couple, and large enough to allow for privacy, even when occupied by two people at the same time. What about storage possibilities? Anything of that nature you could show me? A spare bedroom, in case you have a lot of house guests. It could also be used as an upstairs office, or a storage space with easy access to the attic above. Yeah, that's not gonna make me buy this place. Let's move on. The attic. Not too much to say about it. It's small, tends to be prone to a leaky roof, and likely houses various types of molds. What are you talking about? I don't care about some leaky attic. Get down here. It looks like something violent took place here. Hmm. The previous owner seems to have been connected with Janus somehow. The police report mentions they found him here in a pool of blood. The house Someone has been sealed off until a few here. weeks ago. Looks Death like was ruled a as a severe allergic reaction. Blood pouring from the mouth and nose. Possible vomiting of blood. Distance between the pools indicates the person was conscious at first, but severely shocked. Handprint on the wall corroborates this. The person lost consciousness after 20 to 30 seconds. Probably bled out in a matter of minutes. There's a strong chance this was caused by a severe allergic reaction or a straight poisoning of some sort. That's a very detailed description. Did you read the police report or something? I dabble in forensic investigation, among other things. I see. Well, let's get the hell out of here. And here's the basement. The usual boiler elements are to be found down here. And it seems a room with a safe of some sort. Now that is more like it. That looks just like a vault. This, this is very interesting. I'll just wait here till you get that door open. Yes, now this is more like it. This I can use. Very nice indeed. All right, let me have a look at this thing. Advanced Kronstadt Matrix Laser Home Security System. <laughs> we used to break these open for training at the Academy. The thing about these systems is, most homeowners are lazy. So, they don't reset the factory settings and enter their own codes. Let's just try the standard admin code just for fun. Well, what do you know? It worked. Looks like Schmidt was a bigger amateur than I imagined. Mm. Frank, go outside and check the garden. I want to know how visible this vault is from the outside. 
Anything sticking out of the ground, weird sloping things like that. You got it, sir. So you're looking to sell this for, uh, how much was it again, 1.1? Sounds about right. Hmm, I suppose that's not unreasonable. And his vault unit looks quite versatile. Internal climate control and explosive laser security. All the comforts of home. Yes, quite interesting. And a nice looking safe in here too. Any idea what the previous owner was using this for? No idea. Maybe a mausoleum. Huh. That's weird. But I think I can come up with some good uses for it. All right, I think I've seen enough. All right, I'm happy. Tell your firm I'll buy the house at the listed price. Cash. Have your people draw up the documents at once. Very well, Mr. Cassidy. Excellent. Good day to you. Ah, you need this room? Don't mind me. I'll find somewhere else. My husband would let me have that much art inside the house, but he gets, well, <laughs> he doesn't appreciate it the same way I do. Well, Richard and I have similar interests, so it's really not that hard to get him to go along with my ideas. Although, I have to say, it's been challenging to find a good place for my old microfilm viewer. Right now, it's just collecting dust in the attic. Microfilm? That's an interesting thing to collect. Well, it's sort of a hobby that never really took off. Besides, I don't have any microfilm to play on the viewer anyway. I'm not sure I could find any either. Hmm. Well, Janus next door collects all kinds of ancient memorabilia. He might have a roll or tape or whatever it is that sort of thing uses. I'm sure he'd be delighted to lend you something. That's very good. Back in the know. day, Thank Janus you. was known for his obsessive need to archive and keep memorabilia. If he has any microfilm in his house, it might contain something interesting. You know, my son's got Richard, you are such a fool! How could you forget the glass? All you had to do was remember the dash, flip some burgers, and get Susan to the turkey. Hey there. Hey, did you grab the pack of smokes that was thrown over the fence from the old guy's garden? No, man. I I'm trying to stop. Ah, uh, well. You know, I think someone's there. There's no reason for him to kick the habit when he's already so close to kicking the bucket. I say, let the old man smoke. Have you seen that oxygen tank near his bedroom window? 
When you can't breathe with the help of your own lungs, it's probably not wise to also breathe through a cigarette. Letting him smoke it is basically euthanasia. A propane tank. Is that for me? The grill seems to have run out. Ugh, can you just get oh. away from me? Wow. Have you never you heard of personal space? It's good to know the kind and helpful people still exist. Guess I have to start flipping burgers now. Psst. Wrap your lips around this. Hmm. That's pretty strange. Thanks, I guess. No, thank you. Pardon me. Can I offer you a little treat? What? Thanks, Excuse me, come I on. guess. I'm sure you already the pleasure is all mine. For a proper introduction all the same. I'm Susan Wilson. Hi. This is my husband. You want to try something different? Mm. No way. We are so glad you all could come out. Say, oh, makes a thanks. Before, You're welcome. Posting their neighbors there, so I am grateful that you provided us with that opportunity. Isn't that right, dear? Psst. Care to try something Absolutely. special? Absolutely. What? Uh, a little louder, hun. Uh, <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, thanks. Just like so, sure so thing. Said, it's really great to be here with, with so many. Excuse me, you should try this. It really is to die for. You've got to be kidding me. You know, Richard and I have done a lot of moving around over the years, but like they say, a rolling stone gathers no more. Thanks so much. And You're welcome. We it's me, just for you. Town, we knew this was where we wanted to start finally gathering some moss. That's just a wonderful place. All So I'm going to stop traveling on and let you all enjoy the barbecue. Please don't be shy. Come up and introduce yourself. We're just dying to get to know you all. Don't hesitate to ask Richard about his books or to coax my best cheesecake recipe loose. Whatever you like. We don't bite, do we, huh? Uh, nope. Hey, you, uh, what's your name? El Camarero, you, the server. Hey, hello. Is anyone there? Cuidado. He's by the house. Ay, la puta! I can't deal with it. But Hello. I just can't. Can I tempt you with a little snack? All oh, right, shit. folks. The food is ready. Oh, oh, thank you. It's nothing. Nolan Castle. I've seen you around the neighborhood. Wonderful. Well, feel free to mingle with the other guests. Once the food is ready, let's try the buffet. I'm sure everything will be just to your liking. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson. I'll do just that. Ah, there's an open spot. So, what's good here? I hear it's all to die for, Mr. Cassidy. Uh... <clears throat> You should try this. Uh, what in the world? Look, this is me left and right here. We'll start serving people, all right? Thanks, I guess. Sure. They all laughed. This is Columbus. When he said the world was wrong. Oh. Nolan Cassidy is down. Good work, 47. Janus awaits your attention. Have a fly. 
Read more about Charles Blake III. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. big flex on the track of the gentleman is only to be described. It could have been more than four or five minutes ago, I spotted his pumps with a real suspicious bag. And I just gave him the eye. Have you seen that Janice's oddball nurse is at it again? Oh, yeah, the bird guy. I think he comes early just to chat with the birds. Spends more time with them than he does with Janice. A couple of weeks ago, I walked past him, and I have to tell you, he gets into some pretty personal stuff with him. He shared his opinion on Janice. Let's just say it's not exactly overwhelmingly positive. Well, cranky old men don't tend to be very likable. Maybe if you don't get along with the elderly, stay away from a career where you make personal house calls for them. Uh-huh. You know what I like about you, hey man? Guys? We have some You're weird noises. Don't you? I'll have a look around. Not like Dan. I have never met a man so full of bile. I mean, I'm just trying to help him, and he's behaving. Huh. Hello? He's been sitting there most of the day. I don't know what he's reading, but it looks like it's the most interesting thing he's ever come across. The new Cassandra Snow novel, maybe. Flavors of past shimmer, or something like that. See, my wife's reading it now. I can't get her to do anything around the house. No, no, it's not a novel. I think it's a, a journal, or a, or a diary. He's one of the security people working over at that old Russian guy's house. That's gotta be something from the old man's archives. Oh. If that's one of Janus's diaries, it might contain some important information about his past. Our past. Or maybe something that can help us locate the Constant. Hmm. 
of Janus's many diaries. He's apparently been the chairman of the Ark Society for years. He stepped down very recently, but is still attached to the Society. Well, 47, this is valuable information. my property. I need it to get rid of an aggressively invasive mole in this poor old man's backyard. Calm down, demolition man. Unless it's a flesh-eating mutant mole, you don't need explosives. We're gonna keep them safe in our trunk until you produce that license, okay? Now, come on, man. It's standard procedure. You stuff the holes, and then you blow up the tunnel system so it collapses. Look it up on YouTube. Sir, if the American police force looked to YouTube as guiding principle for standard procedure, I'm pretty sure civilization would have collapsed a long time ago. God damn it! What's going on? Found another pack? Yeah. He tossed it in the trash like the others. I really like Gunther, you know? But if Mr. Janice wants to smoke, why stop? He's ancient. Yeah, he's been instructed to keep the man alive. A pack of smokes per day ain't gonna do wonders for Janus' lungs. I really don't think our duty goes that far. The old man wants a few smokes during the day, so what? He's older than the trees by now. Let him have some fun. It's not like we're tucking him into bed at night, making sure the covers are neatly folded around his frail old body. Yeah. Actually, Gunther made me do that last night. Shut up, you're kidding. attracted these little pests. That would certainly explain it, sir. But, uh, um, uh, sorry. I, I, I didn't actually bring the tools to fix this problem. That's of no. Say, Gunther, did you see my photograph? The group photo. Uh, no. Janus is looking for an old group photo. It might be interesting to see who's on it.
Huh, strange. Possible intruder. Sweeping area, over. I understand you have a mole problem. Oh, you're a godsend. Let's get straight to it. The sooner this is fixed, the sooner I won't have to listen to Mr. Janus's complaints. Follow me. As you can see, we have a mole issue. Now, I know a permanent solution might take some time, but if you could just fill the holes by the end of the day, it'd be great. Come find me when you're done. What was I supposed to do again? Fill the holes. I don't care how you do it. Come back to me when you're done. I'm done. Great. Let me have a quick look. Uh, a bit unorthodox, maybe, but you got the job done. Let me get Mr. Janus so we can inspect it for himself. Hey, tell Mr. Janus the molehills have been fixed. So, uh, just to warn you, I'm sure this whole inspection is going to remind Janus about something exciting from his past. And I'm sure that he's going to tell us all about it. You know, old people syndrome. Just play along. Better yet, keep your distance. Oh, here he is. Uh, Mr. Janus. So the holes are thin, huh? Yes, Mr. Janus. The gardener took a bit of an unorthodox approach, but they do look filled to me. Well, I think I'll be the judge of that myself. Thank you very much. Hmm. Once I controlled the whole world, now huh. I can't even control well, I guess that's my one way to go backyard. About it. Well, he's a professional. to remind me of her after they sent her to the camp. Interesting. 
I see that you have completely blocked their escape routes. They're trapped and completely at mercy. Well, we certainly put an end to that little invasion, didn't we? The sun is nice today. I think I'll take a little nap out here. Leave me. I want some peace and quiet. The first annual gathering of the Ark Society. Hmm, that rings a bell. If Janus was its founder, perhaps he's still attending these gatherings, 47. This could be valuable information indeed. Is that therapist? He should be here already. I swear, if he's down by the creek feeding those ducks again. Hey! Any sign of that Lafayette guy yet? <sighs> Never mind.
wonderful. Yes. This takes me back. The night I passed the torch. End of an era as constant. We had the Vienna Philharmonic play it that night. Empty concert hall except for the two of us. A rare moment indeed. A good talk. Hands shaken. Honor among men. As it should be. I wonder if he remembers it as vividly as I do. I should ask him when we meet again soon. So, that piece of music sparked a memory in Janus's mind, and we now have confirmation that he and the Constant will be meeting each other soon. Great work, 47. Sir, I will have to check you if you want to pass, okay? This will just take a sec, sir. All right. Good job, sir. Thank you. New guy, huh? The regular guy is indisposed. I'm here to take care of Mr. Janus. All right. Just ring the doorbell. Someone will be with you in a moment. Who are you? Where's Lafayette? He's not well. Hopefully it's something serious. I wouldn't mind if Lafayette was replaced permanently. He's an insufferable bore with a room temperature IQ. But if you're the new guy, you need to be on time. I have a busy schedule, you know. You have a very distinct face, my friend. Eastern European, am I right? But more than that, a refined mix of cultures. You look almost like an artist's rendering of the perfect man. I knew a man once, a doctor. He would have found you quite interesting, I think. Are you trying to be intimidating or something? That won't work on me. <sighs> so, back to this thing. I'll just spend a few minutes with the inhaler to fill my system with as much oxygen as possible before we proceed to the bathroom for the health check itself. Don't worry, you're in good hands. This way, please. All right. Let's go, then.
Another male nurse. Odd. You know, you remind me of someone I met a long time ago. A young boy in Romania. Tell me more about this boy. Ah, the boy. I remember his eyes better than anything. Ice cold, defiant. Maybe it was the nature of the project itself that led me to dislike him. But I felt nothing but disappointment when I looked at him. What a waste of resources. Project? What project? <laughs> it was all based on one madman's pipe dream. Create an army of super soldiers through genetic manipulation. Somehow, he had managed to impress my superiors, and they had provided him with effectively endless resources to be wasted on foolish ideas and experiments. The project was idiotic. The subjects were erratic, unreliable. Why build an army of reckless super soldiers when a handful of well-placed spies can do so much more for your cause? What became of him? Oh, I don't know. Dead, I assume. In the end, we had his mind wiped. All the boys underwent the same treatment. I didn't follow the subsequent cleanup process, but from what I understand, the doctor and everyone else associated with the project is long gone. I see. Yes, well, enough reminiscing. Are you about done here? Almost done, yes. You have strong hands. Last time I met someone with a firm grip like that was back in Minsk in 78. Olga had hands the size of a Kamchatka brown bear's paws. I miss her sometimes. Her command of the human body was legendary. Run along now. We're done here. One foot in the grave, but without my smokes, I might as well be dead. <coughs> as old Trotsky said, just as a lamp before going out shoots up in a brilliant flame.
Helen, how are you today? Oh, just fine, Janus, darling. It's Saturday, so I've been making a lot of muffins for the town. You know how I love to spoil everyone. You would have made a good Soviet citizen, Helen. The West could use more people like you. Kind, benign, altruistic. Ah, oh, well, I don't know about all that. I just feel like giving something back to the community that has given me so much. Speaking of which, when are you coming over? Your robe is ready. Ah, excellent. I'm still a little sore, but maybe later, if my muscles stop cramping so much. I would love that. Me too. <clears throat> anyway, I will let you get on with your baking. I will call you again later, perhaps. All right, darling. Oh, tea. Just what I needed.
gods. Necessary, but not too bright. Hmm. I really must find some time to finish my documentation of this piece. Ah, uh, to imagine it once stood on the work desk of Lenin himself. A daily reminder of what he fought for. A heavy burden to inherit. I must make sure it gets a place of honor. The twins will likely object to my beautiful donation. Not futuristic enough. Not sufficiently forward viewing. They would do well to remember that the past is what shapes us, not the future. It took quite an effort to locate you. Stolen by cowardly capitalist spies trying to destabilize the motherland. Lost for 43 years until you were found by a Polish peasant girl on a former state farm outside Krakow. What might have happened in those years? I must dig deeper to find all the stories. I think I lose my mind living on the burbs like this. Janus, what a lovely surprise. Come in, come in. Thank you, Helen. So good to see you over here, my darling. 
How are you feeling? Better. The days have their ups and downs, as I'm sure you know. Nolan Cassidy is a, well, excuse me, but a real pain in the ass. I never did understand why you needed to have so much security around you, Janus. It's been like that all my adult life, so it's hardly something I notice anymore. But this new Herald, well, he's no Schmidt. You liked Schmidt, didn't you? I did. But I, I want you to know that I hold no grudge. I can't say I fully understand why you... Well, I've done much worse. Much worse. Janus, I... It was an accident. I want you to know that. He wasn't supposed to die. I believe you, Helen. You went through things while away that no person of your fragile nature should have to go through. Experiences like that, they change a person, stir at things deep inside that should not be stirred, and which, if brought to the surface, cannot easily be pushed under again. I think it's always been there, the urge. My brother had pets. They would inexplicably die, and Mother would be furious with him. I, I enjoyed that. At university, I would spike the boys' drinks just to see what happened. One of them fell from a window and broke his back, but I got it under control until, well... You know, Helen, this is good. I feel like this opens a new part of our relationship. There are things I know about drugs, poisons, chemicals I could teach you, if you wish to learn. But I think that is for another time. I am tired now. I am glad we talked, Helen. Me too, Janus. Me too. Long night, eh?
I'm flattered, but I don't swing that way. Well, not besides that one time in the 60s. Hmm. <laughs> Last, the actions of the first constant catch up with him. Death feels like an easy way out for a man like Janus. Still. We are close now, gentlemen. Both targets are dead. All mission objectives are completed. 47, once you've left Whittleton Creek, I will notify Providence of our discovery. In the meantime, we'll go over the clues you found. Once we've located the constant, We'll make our final move. You make it sound so easy. Society, one of Providence's more obscure outfits. I've heard whispers. A survivalist club for the global elite, billionaires preparing for a global collapse. And now we know the Constant will attend their next gathering. So where is it? That's the catch. The report is redacted. No names, no location. So it's a dead end. I can't track them, not without ICA backup. Now, I'm no big shot analyst, but it seems to me Janus was the Ark Society's founder, so chances are they'll want to pay their respects in private. Track the coffin. Worth a shot. You're right. It comes back in flashes. Fear, anger, but... Like it happened to someone else. <sighs> your gift and your curse. What they did to you. Well, I spent a long time feeling guilty about that. Now, I wonder who got the better deal. Yes. Found something. What are we looking at? The ass end of nowhere. But this is where Janus's remains were shipped to. Our choice for a final resting place, wouldn't you say? Not bad. So we stake it out. Await the next gathering. Then we waltz in and kidnap one of the world's most powerful men. Without ICA backup. Like I said, it's a long shot. We'll take it. us all, our families. Do you think you feel more betrayed than I do? Get some perspective, please. Janus is dead. 
Lucas Gray is about to join him. And a cornered animal is twice as dangerous. Let's be perfectly clear. We were not exposed. The threat is neutralized. We are back on track. Even so, from this point on, we expect you to take... No, there is no way I'm doing that. How can you question my loyalty? In case treachery is contagious. Do you really want to do this to me? Is there a problem, Secretary? No problem whatsoever, madam. Here's to loyalty. My man on the island confirms that the Constant has arrived. We head out at sundown. Here, in case the crew get ideas. Why are you doing this, Mr. Gray? You had a chance to walk away. Why didn't you? A year ago, I'm working security for this banker, Cobb. Only to find out he's a Providence operative. I'd been running for decades, only to wind up where I started. We've all got barcodes on the back of our heads. Most people just never notice. 47 told me about your parents. How did they die? Car bomb. Surrey, 1989. Company named Blue Seed didn't care to pay for their mistakes. But I like to think no one's untouchable. I'm... I'm sorry for your loss. You feel it, don't you? Unlike him, you feel it all. Everything you've done. It's a dangerous thing, having a conscience. Attention, gentlemen. Our source on the island just made a critical discovery. The Constant has a poison chip embedded in his neck. A failsafe, in case he's compromised. Damn it. Uh, we should have expected something like this. So, we subdue the Constant before he has time to react. Not that simple. The device is remote triggered, and during his stay on the island, two kill switches have been entrusted to twin sisters Zoe and Sophia Washington, two young, ambitious Providence operatives and newly appointed chairwomen of the Ark Society. Apparently, even the Constant is unaware of this arrangement. Right, change of plans. We divide and conquer. 47 takes out the Washingtons while I figure out a way to get the Constant off the island. It'll be tight, but once we're back at the ship, we should be able to surgically remove the chip before the partners have time to react. 47? Tell me about the targets. I know them from the archive. Zoe and Sophia's father is president of a powerful conservative think tank one of Providence's prime assets. The apples don't fall far from the tree. No saints either. According to ICA files, the twins are pampered socialites who get their kicks from treasure hunting. Commanding a band of trigger-happy mercenaries, Zoe and Sophia prowl the world in search for ancient relics. With little regard for local culture or even human life, they stop at nothing to claim their prize. Well, collateral damage they may be, but safe to say, they have coming. The Isle of Scale. Headquarters of the Ark Society. Founded by Janus in 1991, the Ark Society is the world's most exclusive club. Its plutocratic members fear the downfall of civilization, and they are willing to pay huge sums to ensure their own survival. Once a year, they gather here to shop the latest survival products 
and to showcase new initiatives and breakthroughs. Right. These gatherings are shrouded in mystery, so we have limited intel on what to expect on the other side of the walls. The Washington Twins are hosting their first annual gathering as chairwomen of the Ark Society, and the Constant is known to attend every year. Beyond that, you're on your own. Good luck, gentlemen. I dare say you're going to need it. to the annual gathering of the Ark Society. As Ark patrons, you are welcome to explore the castle grounds. However, certain areas are off limits, including the keep, which houses the members area, convention space, and council meeting. Should you wish to apply for Ark membership, please be aware that such cannot be bought, only earned. All said? Excellent. Follow me, please. So, what do you think? Oh, you weren't kidding. This place is great to get. Where are we? I'm not sure. Some old knightly stronghold. The architects are calling me around for ideation first, but tonight's the only time the rest of us get together. So, we decide on what to buy from the catalogue. One of the bunkers, for sure, and I'm curious about the crimes. I think you're gonna like it here, Logan. A seven-digit tuition fee. Better. What else? Uh... Ah, yes. Zoe Washington, one of our newly appointed chairwomen, has prepared a brand new official ceremony scheduled to take place in the upper courtyard. A stirring ode to rebirth and the enduring spirit of mankind. I believe that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Please enjoy your evening. The bar is right up ahead. Welcome, sir. I take it this is your first gathering? Would you like to know more about the Stronghold product line? Yes. The Stronghold series is our original and most popular initiative. Bright and spacious, our underground shelters are a far cry from the crude and utilitarian nuclear bunkers of the past. Situated 40 feet below the frozen tundra on Svalbard, able to resist all but direct meteor strike, the Stronghold Hive system features a public area, complete with bars and restaurants, a movie theater, and even an exercise stadium. Should I go on? Sure, why not? Each individual shelter features electricity, running hot and cold water, a jacuzzi, and high-end customizable interiors. Simply flick on the patented Kronstadt Industries hologram windows to a soothing natural view of your choosing. And the Stronghold Shelter will feel like a home away from home. Would you like to know more? I suppose so, yes. You can choose between three models. The Gold Class, the Platinum Class, and finally the Super Deluxe Rhodium Class, also known as the Core Suites, where you'll be certain to spend your subterranean exile among the very best kind of people. Prices begin at 99 million. What can I sign you up for, sir? I'll think about it. 
sent me back a cool 99 million. But hey, it's probably tax deductible, right? How about you? <sighs> My ex-husband scored the old three-bedroom suite that I purchased back in 08 when the plans for the Arctic shelter were first announced. Part of the settlement. So now I'm considering one of the core suites. Ooh, oh, 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 big spender. I thought those were long sold out. Well, this one belonged to Thomas Cross. One man's loss, as they say. How much? If you don't mind me asking. Can you keep a secret? Six congressional hearings say I can. What? <laughs> Holy Christ. Yeah, just don't tell Clarence. If he finds out how much money I stashed away in Switzerland, I'll lose the other estate too. Sure is a lot of green for an underground bunker beneath a glacier at the ass end of nowhere. Especially one you'll likely never use. Still, what's money compared to your kid's safety? What indeed? Stop playing. Selling. I need the floor for him. Is everything right now? My mind shift. You gotta make me believe that you're not just a waiter, but the best goddamn waiter on the planet. You understand? Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Archeans, can I have your attention, please? Now that everybody's here, we're ready to proceed. Please make your way to the upper courtyard. The ceremony is about to begin. Thank you. How are you today, sir? Say, so is that the, um, Master of Ceremonies in the chapter? Yeah. You think they're going to start soon? I feel like we're waiting for the well, What's with that weird bird effigy? It's the annual Phoenix ceremony. Symbolizes the collapse of civilization from which the Ark Society emerges unscathed and triumphant. Ah, rebirth. I get it. What's new is that the Master of Ceremonies will light the effigy on fire with Zoe Washington inside it. Huh. A bit showy, wouldn't you say? Hey, whatever sells.
You do it. Seriously, I'll, I'll pay you. Me? You're the master of ceremony. I'm a multiple Tony award-winning playwright. And famously reclusive. It's part of my brand. I never go in the spot like this. Besides, I do chamber plays. It's a spectacle. They won't hate it, Mr. Feniger. It's just entertainment. Entertainment? Lord, what have I done? Did I let her talk me into this? Should I tell Miss Washington that you won't be going on stage? Everyone's waiting for you. God, no. No, she frightens me. I just, uh, just, just give me a moment to control the nerves. All right, Mr. Henniger. Regular. Damn. We might have a possible disturbance. I'm moving to investigate. We'll keep you posted. Good check. How are you today, sir? The crowd is starting to get restless. Your peers are waiting by the stage, and the torch is ready by the money. Miss Washington, 
Master of Ceremonies has arrived. We are good to go. Over. Your evening's going well. Ready when you are. Some pledge, and yet a drop in the ocean. Zoe Washington, the Ark Society recognizes you as our founder's rightful successor, our inspiration, our guiding light, the custodian of our future. Patrons of the Ark Society, you are part of a select, chosen few. Our founder, Janus, showed us how to survive. But survival is not enough. We must live, and we must soar. The Ark Society must not only commit itself to survival, but to progress. Be it our next home in the stars, or the next step in human evolution. This is the eternal purpose of the elite. Not just to lead, but to lead from the front. When the time comes, and all comes tumbling down, when mankind retreats once more into caves of superstition, we will keep the fire alight. We will be the torchbearers, the trailblazers and pioneers. Do, do not feel guilty for your privilege. Be proud, be fearless, for the future is ours to shape. Oh, hello there, sir. Sir? Look at you, Fenneger. All dressed to kill. Now, let's do this thing. Light her up. As the world burns, we rise from its ashes. Not just to survive, but to live. I don't get. Why the masks? It's not like anyone's keeping their identity hidden. I'm told it's part of the tradition. The founder wanted ARC members to appear anonymous. He wanted us to see each other as equals. Well, we are all equal. We're all filthy rich. Not like that. 
He wanted us to muse on the fact that when disaster strikes, we are just as lost, just as small and fragile and vulnerable as the plebs. And no amount of money is going to save us unless we stand together. That's pretty heavy stuff. The founder was a serious man. Not now, Marco. I'm kind of in the middle of something. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. You see, I have one of the tokens. You what? How did you... What difference does it make? Look, the token is yours if you want it. But on one condition. You serious? Name it. Okay, here's the deal. I want a seat on the Titan ship. But I don't want to become an ARC member in order to get it. It's too much hassle and responsibility. Wait, you want me to... Buy a seat in my name? Yeah. I'm... No, sorry, Marco, but I can't. If they figure it out, we'll both get expelled. They won't find out. Don't be a chicken, Paul. No, no deal. Now stop bothering me. I'm behind as it is. Not me this year, chasing tokens around like a sucker. I don't know. Looks kind of fun. Like Final Club all over again. How does it work? The tokens are hidden throughout the castle, you know, like out of reach places like the ramparts. And the first initiate to collect enough tokens undergoes a polygraph test with the chairwoman. If you're deemed worthy, you get promoted dark member. Hmm. I could do that. Yeah, I'm not so sure. Depends on your pain threshold, I guess. You see, Zoe Washington up the stakes this year. Word is, she's brought an ECT device to the interview. Wait, electroshock? But that's torture. Some would call it therapeutic. Wow, I knew the twins were hardcore, but this takes the cake. Count me out. Already had. Multi-level marketing is like a license to print money. No one comes far enough ahead to do the math themselves. So, you, you like the class? Toro personally. I, I could introduce you, you know. Weird. Someone should go see. Okay. referring to, Mr. Reaper. Your friend wasn't interested, but I am. Hmm. Okay, let's talk. But not here. Follow me. You sign on three friends, then they sign on three friends. Now, what is it exactly you think you heard? You have a token. And you're willing to trade. So, let's trade. I see. Awfully convenient. You showing up like this, wouldn't you say? How do I know you're not ARC administration? I'm just looking to get ahead. Same as you. No. No. This smells fishy. Find yourself another patsy. We're done here.
Congratulations, Initiate. Now the real trial begins. Hey, Miss Washington. An Initiate has completed the treasure hunt. Yeah, understood. Bring him to the interrogation room now. So, uh, you think you got what it takes, Initiate? You think you got the stomach for what comes next? I can hold my own. Is that so? You some kind of tough guy? Tough is for amateurs. Oh, Miss Washington's gonna have a field day with you. Welcome, Initiate. Take a seat. Good. Now pay attention. This is a polygraph machine hooked up to an ECT device. That's short for electroconvulsive therapy, and I assure you it packs quite a punch. In a moment, Ms. Zoe Washington is going to ask you a series of questions, and I suggest you answer truthfully, or the machine will know. Is that clear? Very. Good man. You made it this far, Initiate, but now the real test begins. Is the machine operational? The ECT device is set to medium voltage. I don't recommend going higher than that. This setup is still largely untested. Well, as long as the Initiate speaks the truth, we won't need to. Has my colleague explained the rules to you? Exhaustively. Good, let's begin. And do not attempt to deceive me. First question. Are you the best in your field? Yes. Checks out. Very good. Now, are you willing to break the law if required? Yes. He's not lying. I see. And can you keep a cool head under pressure? Yes. True. Interesting. Well, you're just perfect, aren't you? Maybe a little too perfect. Are you a reporter working for the liberal media? No. Checks out. Well, that's all I needed to hear. Congratulations, Initiate. You have passed the test. Follow me. So, You'll need to dress the part. Over there's your new set of robes. Wear them with pride. You're one of us now. Congratulations, Initiate. Or should I say, ARC member? Yep, you're one of us now. Welcome to the big leagues. Nice. Suits you. Okay, time to join your peers. Follow me. As a fully-fledged ARC member, you'll have special privileges. First offer on our top suites and bunkers, early access, you name it. 
Uh, would you like to be on the first ship to Titan? Well, you can now. Fascinating. Of course, with privilege comes responsibility. You are expected to invest in future projects approved by the Council and to donate to the Ark of Legacy. Not a problem. I'm very accountable. That's what I like to hear. In fact, a man as composed as yourself could prove useful in other matters. We should discuss the precise nature of your business, but that's for later. Just a little further now. Well, here we are. Goodbye, Initiate. And, uh, welcome to the big leagues. Oh, look at this. Blake. And what are you supposed to be? A lion tamer? How predictably juvenile. <clears throat> Zoe, your eyebrows have grown back nicely. Good for you. Cut the shit, Blake. I should have my guys toss you from the cliffs. You have any idea what your little stunt did to Sophia? She's lost her taste for danger because of you. I haven't been in the field for three goddamn months. That's on you, Blake. I... I didn't know that. Well, of course not. You're clueless. Just stay the hell away from both of us, Blake, or you will be sorry. Oh, isn't that lovely? Hey, it's amazing what you'll find lying around the attic. Well done. I have been planning the Founder's Week for over a month. I have some of the world's most prominent people waiting to pay him their last respects. I have the star of the Prague Philharmonic on stage, ready to play a blindfolded rendition of Schubert's Ave Maria on the harp, for God's sake. And you're telling me that you lost the sodding dagger? I'm really sorry, ma'am. My team received no notification. You sure they didn't give you a crate number? They did not give me a crate number, I was told that you people would have it under control. Fine, fine. I'll go and have another look. See that you do. And when you do find it, it's the tower basement where the founder's body's been kept. The mortician's map. <sighs> More pressure. Just what I need. Tacky. Just tacky. How'd it go? Did she tear you a new one? Oh, just about. So, what's your plan of action? Well, I suppose I could just break open every single crate. You could, but you'd risk harming the artifacts. How's your damage insurance? Shit, yeah. Okay, so uh, what's your bright idea? I figured I'd just shoot down your dumb ones until you hit jackpot. Nice. What's so special about this dagger, anyway? It belongs to Tsar Nicholas. Legend goes it was used to stab Rasputin. Apparently, it's been in Zoe. The family's Zoe, when can we see the body? Shortly, Raoul. Muriel, the preservation specialist, is getting him ready as we speak. This procedure, what's it called? Plastification? Plastination. Plastination. Is this truly what Janice wanted? Going on display in the Ark of Legacy like a... like a wax statue? He never mentioned anything of the sort to me. I assure you, his last will was quite clear on the matter. And may we see this last will? You can ask our lawyer, Mr. Yates. But I already know the answer. Now, if you'll excuse me. Ambassador. Strange. So nice to see you. I know me. I'm supposed to feel something. But the fact is, Janus is a name to me. That's about it. I never actually knew the man. I don't think anyone did. Not really. But you were part of this, back when there was just a few of you, right? Oh, yes. Almost from the beginning. 93, I think? He still had the air of a cold warrior back then. We were just in awe of him, a lot of us. Technically, Janus was the least powerful man in the room. But I suppose, if you survived Soviet-era KGB, facing party purges and thermonuclear obliteration on a daily basis, a bunch Mind of pampered answer, executives sir. won't rock your boat. Suppose not. Wonder why he started the society. I mean, the Cold War was over. 
crisis averted. Janus didn't see it that way. He saw firsthand how close we came to oblivion, and he figured humans are flawed creatures. We may have dodged one bullet, but the next one will be a shotgun blast in the face. Ecological collapse, pandemic virus, energy crisis. Death wears many guises. Janus figured there's no way we can save the whole sprawling mess that is humanity. And when the ship goes down, the first-class passengers do what they've always done. Haul ass to the lifeboats and live to spend another day. Words to live by. Anyway, it sure was something, old Janus. A man like that deserves to go out in his prime. Not shrivel away in Yawnsville, USA. I say, whoever killed him probably did him a kindness. and see what's up, would you? Sure, I understand. Sophia's dad is president of the Pax Mundus Foundation. It's the most influential conservative think tank in the last decades. Pax Mundus is like <laughs> the cradle of climate change denial. I mean, just saying their name will make an environmentalist collapse into a fetal position and suck his thumb. Huh. So how do two pampered socialites end up becoming treasure hunters? Boredom, I guess. You know, from what I hear, the twins always had a cruel and restless streak. They studied at Princeton, and let's just say, they made a splash. Zoe Washington bullied a sorority rival named Deirdre Fitzgerald to the brink of suicide. And Sophia was exposed for running a coke ring. Talk about rich kid syndrome. Exactly. In fact, that is the very defense used by their superstar lawyer, Ken Morgan of Morgan Yates and Cone. Right. Didn't he die recently? In a Bangkok hotel? I heard he was assassinated. Ah, uh, that's just an alt-right conspiracy. Anyway, after the coke ring scandal, the twins faded from the party circuit. Apparently, they began to travel the world, seeking thrills and adventure. And that's when a chance encounter with Blake Nathaniel in the Congo gave them a taste for fortune hunting. That Blake Nathaniel, who heads the Ark of Legacy? I guess it's a small world when you're rich and infamous. Of course, that's where the similarities end. While Nathaniel is a gentleman adventurer, the twins are somewhat more, how do you say, Heavy-handed? You're talking about those roughnecks who always follow them around. Like that Adrian Salazar. Yeah. Ex-Cicada mercenaries, mostly. Call themselves raiders. Zoe and Sophia employ them on their missions. Word is, they kill and blow up anything that stands in their way. Amnesty claims they annihilated an entire indigenous Amazon tribe while searching for the lost city of Z. But they never found the smoking gun. Wow. I'm just not sure how I feel about that. Well... We've been led by an ex-KGB spy for about three decades. If that doesn't leave you a bit thick-skinned, I don't know what does. They're fresh blood. That's good enough for me. Up the 
shaft when they don't use it. We're freezing to death up here. Stay here. Okay, I hear you. But death is forever, so we might as well look our best for the final journey, don't you agree? Maybe a touch more rouge.
all set. Cue the music. Thank you all for coming. As Janus's successor, it, it falls upon me to say a few words. I I'll keep it brief, for there is little I can say that does the man justice. Janus was our founder, and like all true visionaries, he was far ahead of the curve. While we, the privileged class, were blissfully toasting the end of history, Janus saw the writing on the wall. As a veteran of the Cold War, Janus knew better than anyone that when true disaster strikes, the rich are as damned as everyone else, unless we work together. Janus never got to see the collapse, but died peacefully in his sleep. And yet, what he started in 1991 will one day be hailed as the dawn of a new age, one where the best among us can thrive uninhibited. This is Janus's legacy. Long live his memory. And now, you are welcome to pay the Founder your last respects. You should know. So long, old man. People always You had are. a better run than most. And the most I successful spy in modern say. history. Oh, and that whole Jasper Knight incident was just... Uh, really, he died the way he lived. Anyway, That's enjoy your rest. Dad. You've earned it. wrestled a brown bear to a tie. Anyway, Godspeed, Mr. Janus. Sorry I never knew you. Goodbye, Janus. We won't forget you. Odd how you helped shape the 20th century, and yet nobody knows your name. As for Danya, old boy, you were always the best of us. I still can't believe I never got to beat you at chess. So long, my dear. I can't believe you're gone. Last of the greats. I'll make sure those naive fools who replaced you won't mess things up too bad. Don't you worry. Goodbye, old friend, and thank you for everything. Rest assured, I will finish what you started. So, here we are. You didn't want me and Sophia taking over. Fought us tooth and nail, but a fat lot of good it did you. Partners, they turned a deaf ear, and deep down, Janus, you know why. Because, for all your smarts, you're just rank and file. Pedestrian, middle-class, blah. And we have the one thing Merit can't buy. Blue. Blood. That's right. Good old-fashioned pedigree. That is why Sophia and me will one day be partners in Providence. And you'll spend eternity as a wax figure. So long, 
mastermind. One target down. Nice work, 47. Next up, Sophia Washington. A remote trigger. Must be a kill switch. Hmm. I bet this would make the constant come quietly. But first things first, 47. Focus on the target. No, they've called a recess. Sophia Washington wants them to pass some kind of motion, but one of the council members is fighting her tooth and nail. Huh. Wouldn't happen to be Jebediah Block, the coal baron, would it? Yeah. How do you know? Well, I happen to know he's on the council. He's one of the original five, you know, the first people to fund the Ark Society back in 91. Plus, I just walked in on Sophia Washington screaming Block's name while beating up a pillow cushion. Oh, she was properly pissed. Jeez, must mean a lot to her. What's it about? What am I, paparazzi? I just work for these assholes. Same as you. Well, keep me posted, in case teeth start flying. Can do. Mr. Block, you look troubled. James. I'm a friend of the Ark Society, yes. If I may be so bold, I heard about your predicament, and, well, I believe I may offer a fresh perspective. Why not? Shoot. All right. Say the world does collapse. Whether it goes haywire or the pole, well, the Ark Society heads off to comfortable arctic sanctuary while the rest of civilization falls into chaos well you do realize what kind of place it'll be right what are you talking about a hundred or so people no market no economy no social structures it will be like a space colony Everyone equal and dependent on each other. It will be egalitarian, sir. It will be, well, communist. That's what I paid almost two billion for. Why didn't anyone tell me sooner? Merely food for thought, Mr. Block. Good night. I bring you to the Thank you.
the council has been usurped by latte sipping tree huggers. This vote can't possibly be binding, can it? Of course not. We're a secret society. It's not like we can take our disagreements to court. But. But what? But, provided that the others agree, the chairwoman does have the power to throw you off the council for obstruction. All rights and privileges removed. Expel me. That two-bit treasure hunter, Sophia Washington, has the power to expel me, Jebediah Block? Technically. Okay. I need an edge, and I need it fast. Well, why don't you call that fixer of yours, Yates? He's gotten you out of a jam before. Oh, I will. This ain't over. <laughs> Sophia the Schemer. What's she up to this time? You know that Kronstadt designer in charge of the brain upload program? Sure. What did he do? I don't know. But she seemed real interested in this invention of his. Something called a kill switch. Kill switch? Sounds ominous. Well, whatever it is she's plotting, he did not want to be part Have of it. Have a good evening, sir. But an order's an order. <laughs> Guess we've all been down that road. <laughs> Poor bastard. Well, that's what you get for inventing kill switches, I suppose. Miss Washington. I forgot to ask. Uh, what are the most frequently asked questions about the Hyperborean initiative? Some of those surveyed asked about security. Will the city have the defenses to withstand a tsunami of refugees? Of course, what they fail to realize is how inhospitable the inland ice is. Only the most resourceful would ever even reach the city walls. And unless you're on a strict polar bear diet, sieges are out of the question. Yes, very good. Anything else? Others express concern about political interference. Plenty of nations have a stake in the Arctic and Greenland as part of the Danish realm. Some members are reluctant to invest millions only to get caught up in some kind of ownership dispute. Uh, that's been sorted out, but we'll make sure to inform the members in the next newsletter. Thank you. That's very helpful. Carry on. Miss Washington, after due consideration, I have revised my position. I would I like to support your motion. Well, well, look at you, Block. Finding your good sense and manners. Come along, then. I'll call a vote at once. I knew you'd come around. You're stubborn, Block, but you're not a schmuck. You know I'm right. The analysts of my father's think tank have been grinding the data for months, and they are rarely wrong. The Karuna Agreement, climate litigation. We estimate that fossil fuel companies like yours have a decade, at best, before you're all resigned to the junkyard of history. And what kind of secret society would we be if we didn't keep each other in power? What indeed? I knew we could talk sense. Just vote in favor of my motion, and I promise you, Block, you'll power the world for decades to come. Well, who cares how, as long as you're the one getting paid. Ain't that the truth? Friends and founders, the recess is over. Let's return to the council room and proceed with the vote. Let's reiterate, for decades, you, the titans of the energy industry, have conspired to obscure the truth about climate change, 
through lobbying, misinformation, and propaganda. This strategy has been incredibly successful, but all good things must come to an end. It is time for you to adapt or die, ladies and gentlemen. This is why our analysts have devised a 10-year transition plan to keep you in power. Play this right, and you will not only thrive, but this time, you will be the good guys. In other words, you have nothing to lose. So, everyone in favor, say aye. 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 Yay or nay, Block? Silence is consent. Nay. Excuse me? You heard me. Nay. Oh, for the love of... Ah, oh, idiot. Son of a... Blocked. You stupid... Oh. That's... Four eyes and one nay. Jebediah Block vetoes the motion. This council is adjourned until further notice. Block. A word? Upstairs. Right away, please. So, are you going to tell me what the hell you're playing at? Just looking out for number one. Don't be an idiot. There's no future in coal, Block. You have one choice. Go green or go extinct. Now, personally, I don't give a shit if you go the way of the Dodo, but you are one of the Ark Society's biggest contributors. We'd hate to lose your business. Besides, if terrestrial coal goes under, who will pay for your children's survival? Your grandkids. After all, nobody says disaster will strike in our lifetime. You have a moral duty to stay rich, Block. Nice try, but I don't have grandchildren. You just had to make this difficult, didn't you? Here's the deal, Block. My family and I we serve a group of powerful individuals who prefer to stay anonymous. Letting the climate go to hell in a handbasket has served their interests well, but only up to a point. You see, they are sitting on some patents that'll knock your socks off. Weather control systems, recycling pollution as fuel, cold fusion, you name it. And they plan to make trillions protecting the world from the very threat they worked so hard to create, but to do so, they need you guys to quite literally stop fighting windmills. Huh. The truth at last. And what's in it for Jebediah Block? Gentlemen, please give me and Mr. Block a moment. offered you a carrot. Now, here's the stick. We know about Montana, Block. The mine collapse in 2015. It would be a shame if the American public got wind of your somewhat creative approach to safety regulations. Your popularity ratings are just south of John Wilkes Booth as it is. I see. You have until dawn to change your position and pass this motion, and you and I... We never had this talk.
Mikhail, fill me in. So the transcripts are real. Janus really did call the estate in Romania? Could the signal have been faked or the dates altered? Don't underestimate Lucas Gray. That's a mistake we're not making again. If he wanted Janus dead, he is fully capable of tricking ICA to do his dirty work. Don't forget he's done it before. The real question is why? If Gray somehow knew about Janus, he would use him to get to me, not have him killed. <sighs> yeah, that bothers me as well. Let's say Gray was just a figurehead and that Janus really was the true head of the militia. How did he make Cassidy turn traitor so fast? The man was loyal to a fault, and yet Burnwood insisted that Janus and Cassidy were together. The only explanation would be if ICA knew that Cassidy could contradict their version of the story. But this makes no sense. What reason would they have to go after Janus? ICA is neutral. I need to think. Thank you, Mikhail. Here's something 47. According to this email thread, Sophia Washington has recruited one of the architects in a plan to discredit the constant. Sounds promising. Olivia is trying to locate Mr. Sinclair's cell number. See if we can't contact him directly. Stand by. Your backyard and a bunch of MREs. You're not seeing the whole picture. You're not even thinking about the big picture. You want a factor X? Extreme weather, wildfire, all of them. There, we have Sinclair's number. Making the call now. Keep your eyes peeled, 47. The Arctic's not even all that cold, if you think about it. People already live up there. You know, give them better resources. Hyperborea could be as cold uh -huh. as any other city. Yes, this is he. I'd pack up and no. leave tonight if I could. No. Yeah, I, I'm, I, no, I, I'm, I'm just going to have to stop you right there. I, I'm perfectly happy with my subscription, and uh, uh, no, I was not aware of that. But, but I'm still not interested. Right. Okay, okay, listen, lady. You're wasting my time and yours, okay? Don't call this number again. What 
about crop growth? Tundra's no good. Hydroponics, maybe? Or small scale geo. Huh? Why does this shit just keep on happening to me? That's Sinclair, all right. And those are the blueprints for the poison chip. Should come in handy. Nice evening. I suppose. No robe, no mask. Which rank are you? Oh, I'm more of an outside observer. Mr. Name's Sinclair. I'm chief technical designer at Kronstadt Industries. The name rings a bell. I just don't see the point of it. Here. I think it might interest you. What's this? I think you know. The chip in your neck is my design, which means. I can override it for a price. Most interesting. Meet me at the tower and be discreet. We can't be seen together. Always am. Sure. Our parents were afraid of the missiles. But I think we both know that if it happens, there'll be some other element at play. Something even we can't predict. Okay, I hear you. Please, come in. Have a seat. It's lovely by the fireplace. May I see those blueprints again, please? Interesting. All right, Mr. Sinclair. I'm listening. Don't. In fact, forget all I said. Excuse me? This wasn't my idea. Sophia Washington. She's the one who told me to approach you. It's all a trap. Go on. I never asked why. I just went along because she's the boss. And you're telling me this now? Why? Let's just say I don't like to get my hands dirty. I see. Thank you for your candor, Mr. Sinclair. You have been most helpful. Hang on for a moment. Sophia, I need to see you at the tower. I'm sure you are, and no, it can't. I am sorry you got dragged into this. Sophia is spectacularly ambitious. Unfortunately, like most people of her elk, she lacks humility and a sense of station. And who are you? Exactly. A humble advisor. Nothing more. Power without responsibility. Nothing humble about that. Hmm. 
All right, I'm here. Are you gonna tell me what's so damn important? Ah, Sophia. I believe you know Mr. Sinclair. We've met. What of it? <sighs> I don't blame you for trying, Sophia. Just for failing. Upstairs. Now. You made a big mistake, Sinclair. This won't be going away. my mentor's wishes because I saw something in you. And this is how you repay me? You think because the partners noticed you that you have their trust, their confidence. I have served them for decades, and you don't even know their names. And yet, you're the one with a poison chip in your neck, and I'm the one holding the trigger. You? They gave it to you. Ouch. That's gotta sting. I mean, the constant is like the voice of God, right? Only he speaks for the partners. Surely they wouldn't dream of undermining his authority. Only the partners are old school, aren't they? They recognize class, pedigree, birds of a feather, and all that. And you, you reek of middle class. You carry the stink of public transportation. And while you have spent decades climbing the corporate ladder, me and Zoe, we've got ourselves a private elevator and it goes straight to the top. Don't fool yourself, Sophia. They may use you to punish me, but you're a tool, nothing more. And this pathetic ruse only shows me how much you have yet to learn. I've said my piece. We're done here, boss. Look, the Sinclair scheme blew up in my face. The constant knows. He hasn't told the partners, not yet anyway, but I, so I sort of lost my shit and waved the kill switch in front of his face. So who knows what he's capable of? This is starting to look like a shoot first and ask forgiveness later scenario. So, stop basking and pick up your phone. 47, if Sophia Washington triggers the kill switch device, okay, all is so lost. Take her out, now, terrorists. before it's too late. They somehow infiltrated the island, had the constant at gunpoint. Zoe and me, we got there at the last moment. We, we had no choice. The constant was compromised. It was the only way to protect the partners. It, it's what he would have wanted. Oh, it might work. Both targets down. Impressive work, 47. And now, to confront the constant. Mr. Gray. What's your status? I'm at the helicopter, but the place is crawling with security. 47, you better bring the constant to one of the boats in the harbor where it's quiet. You can use the kill switch to coerce him.
mentioned it to the family yet. change. Sophia Washington is trying to persuade Janus's original five to embrace the green revolution. That chance. The original five are all energy. The Washingtons are dead. I have the kill switch. What did you say? How could you know about that? You will head towards the harbor. No sudden moves. How are you this evening, No sir? signs or warnings. I will trigger the device if I need to. I know you. The boy in the picture. You have his eyes. You're Burnwood's assassin. Move. Hello there. Partners no more. I take it. I had a notion something didn't sit right with my mentor's betrayal. You murdered him, I take it, to get to me. Not just that. He had it coming. Interesting. It was my impression that you were cured of such sentiment. The good doctor built his serum specifically to target the seats of your emotions. As Miss Burnwood's sense of justice rubbed off on you, I wonder. Just keep walking. For what it's worth, Janus always found Ortmeier's project distasteful, not to mention inefficient. But alas, sometimes you have to play the hand you're dealt. Hello there, oh, sir. I know. This is not an ICA-sanctioned operation. What exactly does Miss Burnwood plan to achieve by targeting her clients, violating her own code? She's doing it for us. Us? Oh, I see. The penny drops. I should have known. How does a man leave no trace by not existing in the first place? Lucas Gray. Was it Subject 6? He died when the Institute went up in flames, but no body was ever produced. And unlike you, his rage never faded. So, now you want the partners, the men behind the curtain who caused you all this pain? Well, before you go knocking down a wall, you better make sure it's not load-bearing. Enough talking. You'll do plenty of that later. We're here. Get on the boat.
Mr. Edwards. Still think this is maintenance. Oh, Miss Burnwood, what have you done? Changing horses midstream? Truly unprofessional. You know what we want. Where is the carrot? No carrot. You're useless to the partners. Compromised. Even if we let you live, you can never return. Why die protecting them? When I can drag them down with me. It's a bad hand, but it's all you've got. Three families. That's all it took. The Ingrams, the Carlisles, the Stuyvesants. Three dynasties secretly pooling their resources over generations, creating a singularity so dense that nothing escapes its gravity. Never heard of them. Well, they've heard of you. In fact, you just became the top of their agenda. Go. We can't give them time to retaliate. Don't take your eyes off him. Be careful. Well, here we are again. I must admit I am disappointed, Miss Burnwood. I had such big plans for you. Save it. I know the truth now. You're outplayed. You have nothing left to bargain with. <laughs> you are so certain. So sure of the people closest to you. He never fails, does he? He never misses his mark. You found a window into his past. And yet, something else remains hidden. A simple truth you learned long ago. Diana! Coming! No one Miss Burnwood is untouchable. everything about them. The ivory towers are about to fall. And when we're done... Let's cross that bridge when we get to it. For now, the partners are all that matter. There's an issue. Of course there is. Olivia's tracked the names mentioned by the Constant, and they're dead ends. How dead? Obituaries for all three have appeared online. Accidental death, heart failure, lung cancer. They're covering their tracks. Faster than I thought. A contingency plan of sorts. The Constant wasn't aware of it. Well, it seems they didn't tell him everything after all. Something this big will leave traces behind. The Constant says to follow the money. Milton Fitzpatrick. The investment bank. It's a key Providence asset. Which you worked for. The director of the New York branch is a Providence operative. It's our best bet as a way in. I'll tell the pilot to turn the plane around. Right, gentlemen. Here's what we've come up with. The partners are transitioning between identities. But everything is so recent, the Milton Fitzpatrick bank records will still be intact. We've confirmed that the partners have active accounts there. However, the bank's records are remotely updated on a frequent basis. We may only have hours before any leads that could get us the new identities of the partners are gone forever. The data we need can be obtained in two ways. The bank's data core can be accessed through the basement vault, but getting inside the vault could be challenging. 
Alternatively, bank director Athena Savalas, head of security Mateo Perez, and head of accounts Fabian Mann each carry a partial backup drive with data. We'll need all three drives to get the full data. Now, we cannot risk the partners discovering the data breach. Eliminating the bank's director, Athena Savalas, would sever the last remaining Providence tie to the bank and keep our activities hidden. Okay, one more time. We break into the vault, extract the hard drive rack, and eliminate the director on the way out. We. You. Good luck, 47. Welcome to New York, 47. The Milton Fitzpatrick Bank is open for business, but it seems there's some sort of investigation underway. Expect increased security. Your target, Director Athena Savalas, can be found in her top floor office, overlooking the iconic Teller Hall. Head of security, Mateo Perez, is roaming between the vault area and the Teller Hall, talking to employees and head of accounts, Fabian Mann, can be found on the investment banker floor and the top floor of the bank, driving the internal investigation. Remember, we need to secure the data from the bank's reinforced vault, or, alternatively, acquire three hard drives carried by the director and her two lieutenants, Mann and Perez. Good luck, 47. I'd like a private meeting, please. Oh, all right. Are you a client? I'm looking to become a customer. I have a substantial private savings I'd like to deposit with your bank. Wonderful. Uh, how substantial? Seven figures. Seven? I see. Excellent. Yes, let's just find a nice private area then. Follow me, please. I didn't catch your name, Mr... Reaper. So, what do you do for a living, Mr. Reaper? I'm in the retirement industry. Ah, then we're in a very similar business. Have these past few years been as profitable for you as they have for us? Very. Excellent. Director Savalas has taken us to record profits. All it took was a creative approach to the elimination of, let's say, unwanted elements. I'm all for elimination. Let me just activate the booth privacy setting for one moment. This way nobody can see or hear anything that goes on in here. Practical. Isn't it? So, you wanted to open a savings account, Mr. Reaper? Yes. Smart move. People have started filling their mattresses with cash, blaming the banks for the host of financial woes in the world, but let me be blunt. These people are the reason the world is slipping. Really? I say we stop taxing the wealthy and allow them to put the money back into society rather than into the state coffers. Watch how that creates jobs for everyone. If people don't put money in the bank, we can't invest and generate revenues for us all. That's, that's practically robbery. Interesting. That's why people of your pedigree are valued customers here at Milton Fitzpatrick. We're on the lookout for quality clientele, not the run-of-the-mill folks who just want to borrow money to save their small businesses. If that sounds interesting, well, then we should set up a proper meeting next week. Talk more about those seven figures of yours, okay? Sure. Excellent. A pleasure, Mr. Reaper. Thank <laughs> you. 
I feel like giving that bit woman a piece of my mind. I gave this place everything. Hmm? You stay here. Okay, I totally understand. Punching that clock, my man. Getting him anything. He's an asshole. Besides, I think he won enough money to buy whatever he wants. Come on.
Hi, Roy. It's Tim, Director Savalas' PA. Listen, I hate to disturb you, but the director wants one of you to come up and look at her machine. Something's off. Uh, as soon as you can, please. me to check on her laptop. That doesn't sound like I'm fired. Uh, maybe you got lucky. Uh, just don't talk to her. All right. Thanks, I guess. I don't really feel comfortable with this. It's just a job, you know? No, Wayne. The job is to find and expose irregularities and signs of fraudulent behavior. Expose, not hide. I understand Athena Kavala still a lot of weight in the industry. IT guy, right? Here to fix the director's problem? Honestly, I'm just gonna turn her machine off and on again and take it from there. <laughs> well, whatever rocks your boat. It's just make sure you don't talk to her, okay? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay.
never accomplishing anything of importance. Sad. Finally, someone manages to drag themselves from the IT dungeon. Now listen to me carefully. I don't want to hear any excuses or answer any questions. Just fix my computer and get out! I'm here for a meeting with Director Savalas. I don't think it... Oh. Yes, of course. That's right, go inside. Thank you. Mr. Jackson, have a seat, please. Thank you. Mr. Jackson, as you must be aware, we've been running some numbers internally. To measure the flexibility and productivity of people working here at the bank. Work hours, output versus input, sales portfolios, late nights and early mornings, things like that. I've been reviewing personnel files for the past few weeks, and a couple of files stood out. Yours, for instance. Is that so? I have quite specific expectations when it comes to my employees. How you appear and act reflects directly on me and this building. And, well, you've certainly managed to stand out, Mr. Jackson. Tell me, do you knit those sweaters yourself? Or does your wife do that? A man needs a hobby, Miss Savalas. Guard, leave the room. I need a moment alone, Mr. Jackson. So, Mr. Jackson, I'm pleased to inform you that you will be able to explore your hobbies in even greater detail in the near future. We're letting you go, Mr. Jackson. The bank appreciates your contributions over the years, but we feel it's probably best to part ways at this time. This may upset you, but let me assure you that eventually you will come to embrace this point in your life as an opportunity. This is not my first termination, Miss Savalas. Ah, uh, somehow I'm not surprised. HR will send you all the relevant papers, Mr. Jackson. Please gather your things as soon as you can. Good day, Mr. Jackson. Hello, sir.
Since it is difficult to drive the it is safer to be... Director Savalas eliminated. Good work, 47. Listen, sir, there's no drama. Just need to check your pockets if you want to pass. Okay, thank you, sir. This, uh, this will be over in no time. All right, good job, sir. Thank you. This is the vault, 47. The data core should really be behind that large that steel door. This area for now. The head of security suspects there may have been some tampering going on here. But I need my things in there. Well, we'll be done before closing time. Again, I'm really sorry, but Fred keeps coming down here. I'm not taking any chances if I let you in. Okay, I got this.
Great work, 47. You now have access to the vault. Good work, 47. That's the evidence secured for now. Oh, careful not to lose it. If anyone sees you with that rack, my guess is you'll draw a lot of unwanted attention to yourself. That's the last objective completed. Exfiltrate the bank, 47. Miss Hall will want to have a close look at that data. Olivia has found something interesting. I'll tell you on the way. Where are we going? To Paradise, 47. So, this is Paradise. If you can afford. Gentlemen, glad to hear you made it out of New York. Where are we? Olivia decrypted the Data 47 recovered from the bank. We isolated three transactions from Providence partner accounts, all made out to Haven, a small corporation operating out of the Maldives. And what does Haven do? To the public, they specialize in reputation management for the rich and famous. The real money, however, comes from the covert reconstruction of identities for wealthy criminals. They make people disappear. The partners are using Haven to acquire new identities. Yes. Olivia's been attempting to hack the Haven servers, but the owners of Haven are manually resetting the access keys every 10 hours. That, unfortunately, makes them targets. Haven Island is a true tropical paradise. Owned by the company's founder, Tyson Williams, the island is used by Haven as a combined headquarters and client entertainment center. Current and potential clients are ferried to the island and treated to the very best the Maldives have to offer. Michelin star chefs, a full massage spa, private huts, exercise facilities, and all the comforts of a luxury island resort are made available to them. 47. We'll be sending you in as a potential new client. We've put together a convincing cover story. You're Mr. Reaper, a thief for hire looking to disappear for a while. Your mission on the island is simple. You need to eliminate the three owners of Haven. Tyson Williams, founder and rumored tyrannical CEO of Haven. Ludmilla Vitrova, a former confidence artist hired by Williams to serve as a client recruiter and handler. And Stephen Bradley, technical wizard and the brains behind Haven's proprietary software platform. With the owners gone, Olivia will be able to penetrate the Haven servers long enough for her to secure the new partner identities. 
I've uploaded all the information we have on the island and the three targets. Best of luck, gentlemen. Hmm. I don't rely on luck. Well, a little wouldn't hurt. Welcome to the Maldives, 47. The Haven Island staff is ready to receive you under your assumed identity as Tobias Reaper, a professional thief looking to retire from a life of crime. Ludmilla Vitrova can be found in the public sections of the island primarily tending to client needs. Stephen Bradley alternates between looking after a strict training regimen and working on a small private island. While Tyson Williams roams his large villa estate at the back of the island. This is it, 47. Eliminating the three owners of Haven should buy Miss Hall the time needed to do a full penetration and retrieval of the Providence partner data. Best of luck, 47. Mr. Reaper, nice to finally put a face to the name. Welcome to Haven. Thank you. Are you one of the owners? Yes, indeed. I'm Ludmila Vitrova co-owner of Haven, and your gracious host for this day. I suspect we'll be seeing more of each other today. Oh, I'm sure of that, Miss Petrova. Wonderful. Your late booking has me intrigued. In the meantime, our staff will take good care of your needs. Thank you, Miss Petrova. Come find me when you're ready, Mr. Reaper. I think we have lots to talk about. If you haven't been to your hut yet, I highly recommend it. There's a letter there for you, which you may find interesting. Thank you, Miss Fatrova. Island. Oh, please collect your key to the private hut in the welcome center. Okay, enjoy your stay. Mr. Reaper, welcome to Haven. Here is the key for your personal hut. Um, it's the one behind you on the right. Oh, and Miss Vitrova asked me to tell you that she has left a personal message for you in your hut. Have a good day, sir. Mr. Reaper, I hope you enjoy your stay here. Oh, if there's anything you need, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm here at your service.
stole my concept and, and my code and made millions on it. I'm really not too keen on giving you the keys to my latest empire. Perhaps if you look at it like this. Stephen has been unable to construct anything remotely resembling quantum and much more. Your work is clearly superior to his. Look, Jason, I feel like we're very close to making an agreement here, and, well, you did come to us with your particular needs. How about I set up a nice session over at the spa for you to release the tension? I don't know. I have to think about this. That's perfectly fine. I'll come by later. Miss Vitrova, it's Tobias Reaper. I read your note. Excellent. I reviewed your file prior to your arrival, and I found it very intriguing. I have an offer for you. If you're interested, you can find me over at the restaurant. I'll keep it in mind. Wonderful. I hope to see you there. This will allow us to start over. Get all those damn lawyers and journalists off our back. And start making some real money. Wow. Mr. Reaper, so good to see you. You mentioned an offer. Yes, it's a little embarrassing, but we've had an incident, a theft. The thief is an employee here, a person working in Mr. Williams's villa at the other end of the island. What was stolen? A USB drive containing some sensitive information. Personal information, which I would rather not fall into the hands of others. So, my offer is this. Obtain the USB drive from the thief without alerting anyone at the villa. The thief is likely still there. I can't get you inside, so you'll have to use that particular skill set of yours to gain access. Do that, and I'll convince Mr. Williams to give you a 50% discount on our service fee. That's a million dollars, Mr. Reaper. What a generous offer. The information must be valuable. Mostly to me. It's very personal. Please call me as soon as you've recovered it. Very well. I'll call you.
Well, then I would suggest you simply stay in the shade. Oh, I promise you, the sun is not as strong here as it seems. My cat also had a bad thing to do. I'm sorry to hear that. But seriously, I wouldn't worry. Just use plenty of suntan. I never married, but somehow all I did was focus on the money. And with this cat. I'm Dr. Singh. Mr. Williams is expecting me. Yes, well, <laughs> I guessed as much. Follow me to Mr. Williams's room, please, and don't touch That's anything. Not a client, is it? We're cleaning the house is that today. His arm around her? Why, that little. Has anyone found anything on the security tapes yet? It's my ass on the line here, you got it? Whoever stole Mr. Williams' USB key had access to the villa, so it must be somebody working with us. Nothing yet. I've told the others this is a top priority, sir. Well, damn it. Review the tapes, find the perp, and get me that USB. Mr. Williams will reward you handsomely for the find. But more importantly, I get to keep my job. That's clearly the most important part, sir. Okay, well, what are you standing around for? Go! Day to you, sir.
Voicemail again? Yes. Hello, Miss Vitrova. Just leaving a message. It's me. I... well, I have the item you asked for. Or... I mean, it's not on me, of course. It's in my locker. Anyways, please come by the villa and pick it up. I really don't feel comfortable with this. If Mr. Williams discovers that I've still... Well, please just come and get it.
that his arm around her? Really sad to see Mr. Williams go in. He keeps complaining about that mighty He can't even go out in the sun with him. You know what I heard? That doctor may be something now. Also, Mr. Williams once suffered from. Said it had likely left some permanent side effects. What? But left a scar on his face. More like scars on his brain. Doctor said there was a high risk of some permanent damage. Go outside. Wait for me on the balcony. I'm gonna soak in this for a while. Make sure nobody disturbs me. You hear? Yes, sir. Tyson Williams eliminated. Excellent work, 47. Two targets remaining.
Hey there, big guy. And we're good to go. your body. Give me 50 pull-ups. All right. I understand. I want to see you sweat. Pull-ups. Lots of them. Aye, aye. Box steps. Lots of box steps. I get it. Come on, give it a go. Stephen Bradley taken care of. Well done. Just one more target to go. Miss Vitrova, I've acquired the item you wanted. Wonderful. I knew you were the right man for the job. I could feel it the moment I laid my eyes on you. Should we meet? Yes, absolutely. Come to the spa over by the pool area. I'm Mr. Reaper. 
I have an appointment. Ah, yes, Mr. Reaper. You can go right in. Miss Batrova should be here shortly. Have a nice time. I'm heading in. Is everything in order as we discussed? Of course, Miss Batrova. Good. I want the left room all to ourselves. No screwing up the double will come like yesterday. Right. I'm just trying to switch out that fence. Again, very soon. Hmm. you how much this means to me, Mr. Reaper. I'm afraid things aren't quite as serene here as they may seem on the surface. I'm slowly beginning to understand that. Tyson, Mr. Williams. He's not well. Hasn't been for some time. We used to be together, but his illness. I couldn't take it anymore. He monitors my every move. I think he asked that girl to steal my information because he wants to... I don't know. Punch me? Kill me? Who knows anymore? Sounds hard. You have no idea. I... I sometimes wish he'd just disappear, you know? Vanish from the face of the planet. And then I'd be free. Anyway, I shouldn't bore you with my personal problems. You've been very helpful, and I will honor my promise and make sure that you get the discount. Perhaps we'll see each other at dinner one of these nights. One on one, maybe. One on one sounds ideal. Excellent. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have a few calls I need to make. Good day to you, Mr. Reaper. Good work, 47. Ludmilla Vitrova has been permanently retired. That's all we need to do from here. Miss Hall should be able to extract the information needed from the Haven servers. Good work, 47.
How was your time in paradise? Productive. Right. We should hear from the others soon. We're in. Whatever your robot did back on the island, it worked. Let's see. Yeah, here we are. You found them? Yeah, right here. But... No, wait a minute. Something's off. See here? All those controlling shares, those are basically the backbone of the Providence Empire, but... But they're not going to the new partner identities. What do you mean? I mean, they're allocated to someone else. Everything is. The partners are, are left with no real control. Who is Arthur Edwards? Message from Olivia. Everything's going to plan. We know where the partners are. We have our targets. You're almost there, old friend. Feels... good, doesn't it? We should head out before the storm hits. Time to fulfill our purpose, 47. To take them all down. 